Section 1 of The Secret Key and Other Verses. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Secret Key and Other Verses by George Essex Evans. Section 1 The Secret Key. There is a magic kingdom of strange powers thought hidden lit by other stars than ours and when a wanderer through its mazes brings word of things seen men say a poet sings its gates are guarded in a sterile land mountain and deep morass and shifting sand storm barred are they and may not opened be save by the hand that finds the secret key that key some say lies in the sunset glow or the white arc of dawn or where the flow of some lone river stems the shoreward wave in shuddering silver on its ocean grave some say that when the wind wars with the sea in that stern music one may find the key or in green glooms of forests where the pine uplifts her spear amid great wreaths of vine or where the streaming mists white rollers climb the dark ravine and precipice sublime a filmy sea that twines and intertwines wreathes the low hills and veils the mighty lines of sovereign mountains crimsoned and aglow in crystal pomp crested with jewelled snow but still with souls of fire men seek that land and die in deep morass and shifting sand to those alone its iron gates are free who find within their hearts the secret key for earth with all the colour of her day is not their country that lies far away end of poem Recording by Alan Mapstone An Australian Symphony by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Not as the songs of other lands Her song shall be Where dim her purple shoreline stands Above the sea as erst she stood, she stands alone. Her inspiration is her own. From sunlit plains to mangrove strands, Not as the songs of other lands, Her song shall be. O southern singers, rich and sweet, Like chimes of bells, The cadence swings with rhythmic beat, The music swells, but undertones weird mournful strong sweep like swift currents through the song in deepest chords with passion fraught in softest notes of sweetest thought this sadness dwells is this her song so weirdly strange so mixed with pain that where soar her poet's range is heard the strain broods that no spell upon the air but desolation and despair no voice save sorrows to intrude upon her mountain solitude or sun-kissed plain the silence and the sunshine creep with soft caress o'er billowy plain and mountain steep and wilderness a velvet touch a subtle breath as sweet as love as calm as death on earth on air so soft so fine till all the soul a spell divine o'ershadoweth the gray gums by the lonely creek the star-crowned height the wind-swept plain the dim blue peak the cold white light the solitude spread near and far around the campfire's tiny star the horse bell's melody remote the curlew's melancholy note across the night 
these have their message, yet from these our songs have thrown o'er all our austral hills and leaves one sombre tone. Whence doth the mournful keynote start from the pure depths of nature's heart, or from the heart of him who sings and deems his hand upon the strings? Is nature's own? Could tints be deeper, skies less dim, more soft and fair, dappled with milk clouds that swim in faintest air? The soft moss sleeps upon the stone, green scrub vine traceries enthrone, the dead gray trunks and boulders red, roofed by the pine and carpeted with maiden hair. But far and near, o'er each or all, above, below, hangs the great silence like a pall, softer than snow. Not sorrow is the spell it brings, but thoughts of calmer, purer things. Like the sweet touch of hands we love, a woman's tenderness above, a fevered brow. These purple hills, these yellow leaves, these forests lone, these mangrove shores, these shimmering seas, this summer zone, shall they inspire no nobler strain than songs of bitterness and pain? Strike her wild harp with firmer hand and send her music through the land with loftier tone. Her song is silence unto her. Its mystery clings. Silence is the interpreter of deeper things. Oh, for sonorous voice and strong to change that silence into song to give that melody release which sleeps in the deep heart of peace with folded wings end of poem this recording is in the public domain the women of the west by george essex evans read for librivox.org by wayne cook they left the vine-wreathed cottage in the mansions on the hill. The houses and the busy streets where life is never still. The pleasures of the city and the friends they cherish best. For love they face the wilderness, the women of the West. The roar and rush and fever of the city died away, and the old-time joys and faces, they were gone for many a day. In their place, the lurching coach wheel, or the creaking bullock chains, or the everlasting sameness of the never ending plains. In the slab built, zinc roofed homestead of some lately taken run, in the tent beside the bankment of a railway just begun, in the hunts on new selections, in the camps of man's unrest on the frontiers of the nation live the women of the west the red sun robs their beauty and in weariness and pain the slow years steal the nameless grace that never comes again and there are hours men cannot soothe and words men cannot say the nearest woman's face may be a hundred miles away the wide bush holds the secrets of their longings and desires when the white stars in reverence light their holy altar fires and a silence like the touch of god seeks deep into the breast perchance he hears and understands the women of the west for them no trumpet sounds the call no poet plies his arts they only hear the beating of their gallant, loving hearts. But they have sung with silent lives the song all songs above, the holiness of sacrifice, the dignity of love. 
well have we held our father's creed no call has passed us by we faced and fought the wilderness we sent our sons to die and we have hearts to do and dare and yet o'er all the rest the hearts that made the nation were the women of the west end of poem this recording is in the public domain Ode for Commonwealth Day by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Awake, arise, the wings of dawn Are beating at the gates of day The morning star hath been withdrawn The silver vapors melt away Rise royally, O sun and crown the shoreward billow streaming white, the forelands and the mountains brown with crested light, flood with soft beams the valleys wide, the mighty plains, the desert sand, till the new day hath won for bride this austral land, free born of nations virgin white, not won by blood nor reigned with steel. Thy throne is on a loftier height, deep rooted in the commonwealth. O thou for whom the strong have wrought, and poets sung with souls aflame, born of long hope and patient thought, a mighty name, we pledge thee faith that shall not swerve, our land our lady breathing high. The thought that makes it love to serve and life to die. Now are thy maidens linked in love, Who erst have striven for pride of place. Lifted all meaner thoughts above, They greet thee one in heart and race. She in whose sunlit coves of peace The navies of the world may rest and bear her wealth of snowy fleece northward and west and she whose corn and rock hewn gold built that queen city of the south where the lone billow swept of old her harbor mouth and the blithe sun maid in whose veins forever burns the tropic fire whose cattle roam a thousand plains with opal and with pearl for tire and that sweet harvester who twines the tender vine and binds the sheaf and the young western queen who mines the desert reef and she against whose flowery throne and orchards green the wave is hurled Australia claims them, they are one before the world. Crown her most worthy to be praised, with eyes uplifted to the morn, for on this day a flag is raised, a triumph won, a nation born. And ye, vast army of the dead, from mine and city, plain and sea, who fought and dared, who toiled and bled that this might be draw round us in this hour of fate here where thy children's children stand with unseen lips o consecrate and bless the land eternal power benign supreme who weighest the nations upon earth without whose aid the empire dream and pride of states is nothing worth from shameless speech and vengeful deed from license veiled in freedom's name from greed of gold and scorn of creed guard thou our fame in stress of days that yet may be when hope shall rest upon the sword in welfare and adversity 
be with us, Lord. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Nation Builders by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Wayne Cook A handful of workers seeking the star of a strong intent, A handful of heroes scattered to conquer a continent. Thirst and fever and famine, drought and ruin and flood, And the bones that bleach on the sand hill and the spears that redden with blood, and the pitiless might of the molten skies at noon on the sun-cracked plain, and the walls of the northern jungles shall front them ever in vain, till the land that lies like a giant asleep shall wake to the victory won, and the hearts of the nation-builders shall know that the work is done. To north, on the seas of summer, where the pearl flotillas swim, To east, where the axe is ringing in the heart of the ranges grim, On the plains, where the free wind bloweth by never a tree or shrub, On the pine-topped slopes, where the settler carves a home in the tropic scrub, On fields, where the miner sleeps unstirred, by the ceaseless monotone and crash of the stampers night and day at work on the milk-white stone. Tis war and stress, with never a pause to mourn for a stout heart gone, till the souls of the nation-builders shall know that the work is done. On the deck of the lonely lightship, in the sand of the new-found west, where strong men fall and die like sheep in the thirst of the golden quest, by the dry stock routes, by the burnt-up creeks where the cattle sink and fail, by the coral reefs where the beaching boats swing neath the sun-tanned sail, in the wild ravine where the searcher's gold is bought with his own heart's blood, in the dark of the drive where the miner's life goes out with the swirling flood, his war and stress, with never a pause to mourn for a stout heart gone, till the lives of the nation-builders have paid for the victory won. In the glare and steam of the cities, the thunder and clatter of wheel, by the teeming wharves where the liners lie at rest on an even keel, in the strife of a swelling commerce, at the desk in the dull routine where the soul of a man is warped and sunk to the soul of a mere machine. In the flash of the wire to west and north, in the hum of the restless street, in the pulse of the toiling press that beats all night in a fever heat, where the weary brain and the pen plod on neath the white electric light, though we fail and fall, still the fight goes on and ever our sons shall fight, till the land that lies like a giant asleep shall wake to the victory won, and the hearts of the nation-builders shall know that the work is done. We are but the hands of the builder who toileth and frameth afar, system and order and sequence, sun and planet and star, faint sparks of a mighty genius, a breath of the oversoul, who shapes the thought of the workers wherever his worlds may roll. On, though we grope and blunder, the trend of our aim is true. On, there is death and dalliance, whilst yet there is work to do. Till the land that lies like a giant asleep shall wake to the victory won, and the eyes of the master worker shall see that the work is done. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. On the Plains by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org 
by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Half lost in film of faintest lawn, a single star in armor white, upon the dreamy heights of dawn, guards the dim frontier of the night, till plumed ray and golden spray have washed its trembling light away. The sun has peeped above the blue, his level lances as they pass, have shot the dewdrops through and through, and dash with rubies all the grass, and silver sound of horse bells round float softly o'er the jeweled ground. The sunbeam and the wanton wind among the feathery tufts at play sing to the earth the night is blind but we will kiss your tears away with broadening glow and rippling flow adown the laughing leagues they go the vagrant lark on wayward wings is fluttering low is floating high no northern twill of rapture rings through the vast temple of the sky but not in vain thy southern strain thou brown-winged angel of the plain here where the days are dull and gray and youth has stilled his joyous song in fancy yet i love to stray by creek and plain and billabong to the curlew's call and the noiseless fall of the unshod hoof neath the gum trees tall i hear once more the plover's peat the gray hawk wheels in dizzy height and swift beneath my horse's feet the brown quail rises in his fright and the galas fly with pink breast high a rosy cloud in a cloudless sky afar i mark the emus run the bustard slow in motley clad and basking in his bath of sun the brown snake on the cattle pad and the reddish black of a dingo's back as he loiten slinks on my horse's track and now i watch with slackened rein the scattered cattle hundreds strong as slowly moving home again the lazy vanguard feeds along to the waters cool of the tree fringed pool in the distant creek when the noon is full slip girth and let the old horse graze the noon grows heavy on the air kindle the tiny campfires blaze and neath the shade as monarch there take thou thine ease for hours like these a king had bartered satrapies here lie and watch through smoke wreaths cool by you sunk log and floating rack the emperor of the silent pool the stately heron white and black afar from heat upon his beat knee deep in shallowy retreat o mellow air o sunny light o hope and youth that pass away inscribe in letters of delight upon each heart one golden day to be there set when we forget there is a joy in living yet end of poem this recording is in the public domain. A Federal Song by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Charles Boyles In the grayness of the dawning we have seen the pilot's star. In the whisper of the morning we have heard the years afar. Shall we sleep and let them be when they call to you and me? Can we break the land asunder God has girdled with the sea? For the flag is floating over us, and the track is clear before us. From the desert to the ocean, let us lift the mighty chorus, for the days that are to be. We have flung the challenge forward, 
Brothers stand or fall as one. She is coming out to meet us in the splendor of the sun. From the graves beneath the sky where her nameless heroes lie, from the forelands of the future, they are waiting our reply. We can face the roughest weather if we only hold together, marching forward to the future, marching shoulder firm together for the nation yet to be. All the grayness of the dawning, all the mists are overpast. In the glory of the morning, we shall see her face at last. He who sang she yet will be, he shall hail her crowned and free. Could we break the land asunder, God has girdled with the sea. For the flag is floating over us, and the star of hope before us. From the desert to the ocean, brothers lift the mighty chorus for Australian unity. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Nocturne by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Andrew Gantz Like weary seabirds spent with flight and faltering, The slow hours beat across the night on leaden wing. The wild bird knows where rest shall be, so ere he roam. Heart of my heart, apart from thee I have no home. Afar from thee, yet not alone, heart of my heart, Like some soft, haunting whisper blown from heaven thou art. I hear the magic music roll its waves divine, The subtle fragrance of thy soul has passed to mine. Nor dawn nor heaven my heart can know, Save that which lies in lights and shades That come and go in thy soft eyes. Here in the night I dream the day by love upborne, when thy sweet eyes shall shine and say it is the morn. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dream Star by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver B.C. Whisper, O wings of the wind, sing me your song, O sea. Gray is the weary world, and gray is the heart of me. Into my shadowy heart pierce like the star of old, pearl of the tender dawn, kissed by the trembling gold. Sing me the hope made sure. Sing me the heart made strong. Give me the battle fire. Give me the bugle song. Onward ever and on, O swift green bird of the sun. Ever a vaster goal for the goal that thy wings have won. Keen with a tireless beat is the rush of thy wings that soar. But keener, swifter than thee is the vision that flies before. What though we die forget and sad for the song unsung? Fresh from her thousand deaths, ever the world is young. For ever the dream world floats a light on a misty bar, and ever the great earth follows the wake of that pilot star follows a spirit ship that bears o'er a spirit sea shadows of thoughts unborn phantoms of destiny silver the giant sails loom through the amber haze and ever the helmsman hope steers for the halcyon days and ever the voices call out of the golden light into the dreamer's heart sad in the lonely night call like the ring of steel and thrill as a bugle's blown splendors of days to be flaming in skies unknown deep in the eastern skies glimmers that phantom star dim in the distance dies the surge of the world afar. Ah, but like broken swords scattered along the van, 
perish the outpost souls that fall in the march of man. Ah, but they die not so. Out of their ashes then, flowers of immortal love spring in the hearts of men. Wings of the swift green earth ever and ever young. This is the whispered word, the wind of the morning sung. This is the rune I heard flung by the ocean old. Pearl of the tender dawn, kissed by the trembling gold. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Song of Life by George Essex Evans, read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Sing not of rest for heart or brain or the strong soul's emotion beneath the shadow of eternal peace. There is no rest in nature or surcease of law and labor in unceasing motion sing not of rest sing not of peace on earth or in the realms beyond our dreaming progress and retrogression all things draw within the edict of eternal law search for the real which lies beneath the seeming sing not of peace Sing thou of toil, of toil that molds today the larger morrow. Move with stout heart on life's great battlefield, and wear the motto progress on thy shield. All that is best is won through toil and sorrow. Sing thou of toil. Sing thou of hope, of hope that lights the world to strong endeavor, height beyond height, but lofter summits show. Depth beneath depth reveals a depth below. Choose thou the best, there is no resting ever. Sing thou of hope, sing thou of truth, that which alone can stand when all is sifted that which humanity in pain and tears has sought with patient toil through myriad years, till thou shalt see with radiant face uplifted eternal truth. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Lion's Whelp by George Essex Evans, read for LibriVox.org by Soen Kelly Park. The Lion's Whelp, 19th December, 1899. There is a scarlet on his forehead. There are scars across his face. Tis the bloody dew of battle dripping down, dripping down. But the war heart of the lion turns to iron in its place when he halts to face disaster, when he turns to meet disgrace, stung and keen, and meddled with the life-blood of his own. Let the hunters wear who flout him, when he calls his whelps about him, when he sets the goal before him, and he settles to the pace. Tricked and wounded, are we beaten, though they hold our strength at play? We have faced these things aforetimes, long ago, long ago. From the sunlit Sydney harbour, and ten thousand miles away, from the far Canadian forests to the sounds of Milford Bay. They have answered, they have answered, and we know the answer now. From the Britons such as these, strewn across the worldwide seas, comes the rally and the bugle note that makes us one today. Beaten, let them come against us. We can meet them one and all. We have faced the world aforetimes, not in vain, not in vain. Twice ten thousand hearth to be widowed, twice ten thousand hearts may fall, but a million voices answer. We are ready for the call, and the sword we draw for justice shall not see its sheath again, nor our cannon cease to thunder, 
till we break their strength asunder. And the lion's whelps are round him, and the old flag over all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Sword of Pain by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson The lights burn dim and make weird shadow play. The white walls of the ward are changed to gray. Down the long aisle of beds with tender grace, Sleep smooths the lines on many a weary face. Yet there are those for whom no midnight brings solace And strength to face the day again. And over all, with wide majestic wings, There broods the awful mystery of pain. Night wears a pace, and now the silence breaks, As here and there some fitful slumberer wakes. And pain triumphant, pain with burning grip, Rings grudging tribute from the tortured lip. A strong man's groan, a boy's short sobbing cry, Pierces the stillness with a sudden breath or the low moan of a long-drawn agony, asking not respite, but the boon of death. Here in the halls of suffering, eye to eye, men measure death and mark if he pass by. Here in the halls of suffering swings the strife, wherein man's skill and death contest for life. Here woman moves in tenderest ministries, with gracious hands that calm the throbbing brain skill and compassion facing fell disease and mercy watching by the bed of pain ah night and day in armor like the snow patient and brave the gray-robed nurses go with light swift steps low voices cheery smiles from bed to bed adown those dolorous aisles angels of succor girt with snowy mail as warriors donned of old their armor bright serene when danger bids the bravest quail against the batteries of death they fight here in the restless night upon my bed whilst bands of steel seem tightening round my head strong tides are rushing through my heart and brain the goal of life the mystery of pain now on the rising wind that roars without murmurs and discord mingle till it seems the voice of the world's wounded and about me seem to be the dreams that are not dreams. Wherefore, great architect, whose power august buildeth the universe of very dust, and that imperial palace of the mind, more stately than the stars, who dost not bind thought that can conquer nature, and above the power of mind has set the power of love. O thou, who weavest through this web of strife strands of great agony and bloody rue, must we still search this labyrinth of life to perish groping blindly for the clue? Even as I cried, the gray walls fell away. The long ward vanished in the glare of day. The broad world spread before me, and I saw thousands lie stretched in the red swaths of war, in rigid wreck like fields of storm-crushed corn, gray faces twisted to a horrid smile and limbs and piteous bodies wrenched and torn, mangled unspeakably strewn pile on pile. I turned to peace amid her olive trees. Great cities rose before me, villages, the spacious mansion and the lonely cot. There was no door that pain had entered not. I heard like sobbings from an unseen tide its keen fire run through all things, and I said, Peace masks a secret war on every side. There is no rest from travail. God is dead. No more the solid earth of my footsteps pressed. The wide sky caught me upward to its breast. The living ether seemed a quickening sea, Where thrilled unseen the germs of worlds to be. At times I seemed to move upon the verge Of some vast viewless current streaming far, and my brain quivered as with mighty surge strange thought waves swept the gulfs from star to star in ordered majesty each system runs with mighty planets circling sovereign suns and strange pale moons like ghosts that haunt the scene of their once living glory and serene 
slow dying stars dreaming of days forgot of silent worlds and ancient memories white mountain crest dense forest secret grot wide plains wild shores the crash of plunging seas like a blown leaf caught by the vagrant air that still ascends i mounted everywhere dead suns and satellites a lightless train in darkness rushing to be born again hurled through the void or by fierce shock redeemed blazed back to life and flushed with splendor bright thronged spaces and dark rolling orbs that seemed millions of black motes in a sea of light there is a river whose imperial flow circles the midmost heaven with broadening glow its fiery waves are rays of suns supreme crimson and gold its changing currents gleam and blue and purest white and in its tide move worlds unnumbered and the starry dust that builds new suns and powers that shall abide to rule new regions with a sway august within the airy isle its waters fold seven mighty suns circle in quivering gold and over all uplift above the gyre shaped like a cross a sword of living fire emerald and amber opal white and blue swift lights keen tremors flash from point to hilt and now blood-red it throbs as though it knew the whole world's agony the whole world's guilt it is the cross sublime uplifted high great flames break from it floating down the sky as though the blood of him who undismayed suffered our sins dripped from its burning blade and though the blood of all earth's noblest ones dreamers and heroes fell in fiery rain to temper worlds new-born and mightier sons the sword of victory the sword of pain trembling i spake before that awful sword where is the golden city of the lord with gates of pearl and on its crystal sea peace and the solace of eternity then like a flash i knew the air around was living ether and i felt the gaze of myriad eyes unseen and heard the sound as of vast music known in far-off days there fell a star across the brow of night and a voice answered echoing from the height the gods ye fashion perish one by one the living god endures when all are gone fool canst thou know the eternal in a day can mortal judge the immortal face to face who of the stardust buildeth as he may and takes for throne the regions of all space eternal spirit imminent apart thou in the living temple of the heart lightest thine altar fires that souls may reign or worlds not yet create and make us pain the discipline of life the seal of worth the test of courage and the burning star that leads through veils of darkness to rebirth to loftier life and victory afar ah not in golden city nor crystal sea but in wide circles of infinity our work is set and not from harps of gold but hearts of men deep harmonies are rolled vast powers stir around us and our course may be by other paths than those our fathers trod and science with her torch unconsciously through strange new realms may lead men back to god he knows not life who hath not felt the breath nor gazed once in the mocking eyes of death the purest springs the waters without stain well upward from the burning heart of pain behold i saw in purest air afar a great light dawn and widen and increase with white flame crested like a perfect star above the sword of pain the crown of peace in the poem this recording is in the public domain A Pastoral by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Adrian Stevens Nature feels the touch of noon Not a rustle stirs the grass Not a shadow flecks the sky Save the brown hawk hovering nigh Not a ripple dims the glass Of the wide lagoon 
darkly like an armoured host, seen afar against the blue, rise the hills and yellow-grey, sleeps the plain in cove and bay, like a shining sea that dreams round a silent coast. From the heart of these blue hills, like the joy that flows from peace, creeps the river far below, fringed with willow, sinuous, slow. Surely here there seems surcease from the care that kills. Surely here might radiant love fill with happiness his cup, where the purple lucerne bloom floods the air with sweet perfume, nature's incense floating up to the gods above. Neath the gnarled bowed apple trees, motionless the cattle stand, checkered cornfield homestead white, sleeping in the streaming light, for deep trance is o'er the land and the wings of peace. Here, O power that moves the heart, thou art in the quiet air, here, unvexed of code or creed, man may breathe his bitter need, nor with impious lips declare what thou wert and art. All the strong souls of the race, through the eons that have run, they have cried aloud to thee, Thou art that which stirs in me, as the flame leaps towards the sun, they have sought thy face. But the faiths have flowered and flown, and the truth is but in part, many a creed and many a grade, for thy purpose thou hast made, none can know thee what thou art, fathomless, unknown. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Looks in Tenebris by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Adrian Stevens When first the gods, whose empire is eternal, In time's deep chalice poured life's sacred wine, Flashed all the crystal cup with fire supernal, then said they, Shall the mortal be divine? Shall man usurp the ways the gods have trod? Who quaffs this cup himself should be a god. So tempered they the measure of their giving, And mingled germs of evil with the good. So mixed they death with the fierce fire of living, And anguish with the joy of motherhood, And with the balm of peace a weird unrest, And an unformed desire in every breast. So set they discord in the sweetest singing, And a sharp thorn about the fairest rose, And doubt around the cross where faith was clinging, And fear to haunt the regions of repose, And dimmed men's eyes so that they should not see, Like gods, the vistas of futurity. They coloured failure with hope's rainbow splendour, and tinged the hour of triumph with regret, made strength subservient to the weak and tender, and wisdom, folly, caught in beauty's net, till unto man life's wine was bitter sweet, betwixt the perfect and the incomplete. Then said the gods, the gods who live forever, let us shower gifts upon the soul of man, that he may catch a glimpse of our endeavour, and yet not solve the universal plan, for though life's deepest truths be near to find, man shall behold and see not, being blind. Thus, to the blessing of the gods descending, the universal curse and shadow clung, the mystic evil with the glory blending that mars the eons since the world was young. For upon all whom the high gods had blessed, there fell the quenchless fever of unrest. Then rose a ferment and an exultation, and all men's souls were thrilled and stirred within. There came a prophet unto every nation to teach new doctrines of the source of sin, and men arose as gods, and creeds began to preach the eternal Godhead, one with man. And ever through all lands with waves sonorous, 
rolled on from age to age the stream of song, which made low valleys sweet with rhythmic chorus, and shook the rock-bound hills with music strong, and flushed and fired men's souls like fumes of wine, yet was but human, not a song divine. For lo, through all that seemeth inspiration, enters the curse that blurs created things, beyond the barriers of our limitation, not ever yet a soul has spread its wings, nor has been yet, nor ever shall there be, a perfect song, a perfect harmony. O music of the wind and of the ocean, O power that sways the glory of the spheres, O aching hearts that vibrate with emotion, O mystery of life, O human tears, what light shall lead us through the wilderness from out the Egypt of our bitterness? O poets, round whose souls since the beginning strange echoes tremble and wild visions throng, ye all have heard the sweetness of the singing, but no man knows the meaning of the song that lifts our frail souls heavenwards with its strain, then flings us bleeding to the earth again. Brothers, my soul was quickened with your gladness. I, too, have sorrowed over human woe. I, too, have felt the terror and the madness that all who seek for truth and light must know. My faint heart falters in the bitter strife, the labyrinths of the mysteries of life. What hope, what comfort in our desolation, what ray to pierce the blackness of our night, to weary hearts, what balm of consolation, that earth is finite, heaven is infinite, what though the hand of faith still points the way, the voice of reason ever brings delay. Nay, though life's secret be beyond our dreaming, and all the creeds that sway the world untrue, a radiance creeps aslant the shadows gleaming, whose golden arrows pierce the darkness through. If all our errors hold one germ of right, the paths that lead to truth are infinite. Throughout all nature and throughout creation, a power supreme its manual sign has writ, in pain and stress, through eons of gradation, shall the weak soul of man decipher it. For since the spirit is above the clay, man shall not know the eternal in a day. Yet, though we know not their immortal places, and though their footsteps are not heard of man, and though with mystery they veil their faces, and bid us search the universal plan, and though to all there cometh with life's breath, suffering and doubt and weariness and death. I sing eternal hope and strong endeavour, truth shining down a myriad aisles of thought. I sing the deathless souls of men forever by strange wild paths to one vast triumph brought. The God in man, the hunger of the soul, one with the wisdom that inspires the whole. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Song of Gracia by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Rachel May And she was called Gracia because she was fairest among women, and many men sought her, but she loved only one. The Legend of Heslard Spring. Across the street, across the grass, across my life I watch her pass. No pure star on a dusky height hath eyes more bright, no lily on her emerald bed a statelier head, no dewdrop on the beaded thorn more radiantly doth glow apart. Oh, she doth shine all these to scorn. Fair are they all, star, flower, and dew. She is the green bird breaking through the winter of my heart. Two violets seeking paradise have hid themselves within her eyes. Her lips are roses, she doth wear a sunbeam woven in her hair, and off the foam flake of the sea her cheek and neck and bosom be. And like a reed the low wind sways, her slender figure glides along. 
serenely tall and very sweet in this the springtide of her days and oh to make my life a song and lay it at her feet summer and now the world recedes time space are fleeting all things but thee o oh love have ceased to be here where thy heart against my heart is beating and like a charm thy white arms compass me and on thy blue-veined breasts my head is lying and all about my face is blown thy hair here let love speak his full heart in sweet sighing for speech were powerless now to voice his prayer softly thy breath like scent of violets blowing steals o'er my cheek with slow delicious pain drink whilst thou canst the goblet crowned and flowing for hours like these will never come again autumn there is no bud of spring about this forest and in our hearts too are the autumn leaves where are the wings o love on which thou soarest meeter art thou to toil and bind the sheaves but there is mellower light upon our faces through all veins the steadier currents flow the statelier charms remain and friendly graces though dull and fitful wanes love's lava glow winter the slow bell tolls across the square she doth not hear its rise and swell the frosts of age have silvered there the clusters of her sun-gold hair she sleepeth well strange city echoes here are sent of reckless strife for prize and place of hearts with warring passions rent but death's ineffable content is on her face a touch a joy a something there that for my sake hath never shone too well i deem in my despair her fairest dream i may not share and she is gone beyond these days of care and ruth to those fair stars which poets sing where grows the tree of fadeless truth in gardens of immortal youth eternal spring end of poem this recording is in the public domain Ad Astra by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Rachel May Weary was I of earth, my body lay, its fires turned down and slaked to faintest heat. My soul went out into the night away where wing hath never beat. The green earth like a marble neath me spun, the shoreless ether and the island stars rose up before, and sun and mightier sun flamed on their chariot bars, cleaving the blue abysmal without sound. Pressed on my soul I felt the awful seals of that vast cosmos, without depth or bound, blazing with golden wheels. I marked Orion's armour glitter cold, where o'er dark bars the milk-white river runs. I marked great Sirius flood the heavens with gold, the sovereign of the suns. All stars grew dim, all suns turned sullen red, waned and went out in that victorious light. Heaven's mightiest star swung on a viewless thread, his mightiest satellite. And, like some storm-tossed pilgrim of the sea, who sights the loom of unknown shores afar, I felt the challenge and the mystery of that majestic star. The giant planet in the golden stream turned all her massy bulk against the glow. I watched her storm-blue mountain turrets gleam, crowned with unconquered snow, and all her table lands and wooded leas, and emerald plains through which clear rivers run, and all the foam crests of her plunging seas that shout unto the sun, and all her marble cities and her towers that climb the hill or shine through deepmost breaks, and all her velvet valleys rich with flowers and all her silver lakes. And, lastly, with a strange new majesty, the face of man did pass before me there, king of the earth and victor of the sea and lord of all the air, whose fleets have lit the caverns of the deep, whose wings have breasted all the winds that blow 
and flashed his signal from that eerie keep to worlds above, below. On the faint limit of the air to north, on utmost marge of that gigantic girth, the grey-haired warden of the sky looked forth and called, What news of earth? Ah, woe is me, I said, that I should bring to this fair orb the shadow of my pain. The earth is full of toil and suffering and the fierce lust of gain. The earth is full of travail and unrest, and hearts grown old and weary ere their time. And shameful yokes upon men's necks are pressed, that some may ride sublime. They love the foot that spurns them. Let them be slaves to a conquering name or flattering breath. Heroes have sought to teach them to be free, and their reward was death. The salt of earth, the blood that loved them best, out of the ground it cries that all may hear, from the dark cross on sullen Calvary's crest to Bruno's flaming beer. They gave to Socrates the poison bowl. They closed Hypatia's noble eyes with fire. They drove proud Dante forth, an exiled soul, reft of his heart's desire. The Spaniard laid an empire at their feet and died despised. In chains, Italia's sage, great Galileo, at their judgment seat, knelt in his hoary age. The cell, the cross, the gibbet, and the chain, thus have ye crowned, O world, your mighty sons. The earth is drunken with the blood and pain of all her noblest ones. Then answered he, and o'er his face there shone a sudden rapture, as the lightning breath of some strong thought that quickens and is gone, yet bids a smile on death. By what strange guidance of the central powers thy soul draws near, I know not. But I know all that has crowned with joy this world of ours was won through bitter woe. Out of the heart's blood of the hero few, out of the lonely strength that scorned to flee, out of the sorrow of the souls that knew we made the world you see, we too have swung the mighty orbit round, chained by the toils that hold ye bound today when all men's eyes were fixed upon the ground, and no man saw the way. Yet was the germ within us, and the power of that great unseen truth to which we draw, that from the seed may come the perfect flower to crown the perfect law. The white suns sail the waveless seas of space, where once their bulk was but a starry flow, down the long curves of each system keeps its place around some mightier glow. From less, too greater. Through the scale of change, all things ascend in their appointed time. Who shall adjudge to man the utmost range his thoughts may climb? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Grey Road by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Adrian Stevens a sun flash on his mounting wing, a wild note soaring high, the lark is up, the minstrel king, the poet of the sky, to thrill, to sing of youth and spring, those golden numbers flowed, what message then has he for men who tread the long grey road? Knee deep in grass the cattle stand, the river winds along, and chants through sunny meadowland a low mysterious song. Ah, sunlit vale and lover's tale, youth's day is quickly gone, past current beat and meadow sweet, the grey road stretches on. Grim bastions frowning down below, and rising tier on tier, sublime and crowned with ageless snow, the awful peaks appear, the heights belong unto the strong, whose scale by crags untried the great cliff's face, but at its base the grey road turns aside. No hope in heaven, no minstrel strain, no veils where summer shone, a leaden sky, a silent plain, the grey road stretching on. O Christ, who trod the thorny path and bore the bitter load, have mercy then, on weary men who tread the long grey road. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
But the greatest of these is charity by George Essex Evans, read for LibriVox.org by Paul Harvey. But the greatest of these is charity for the hospital. White faces turn to us again, sad eyes from out their veils of clay, strength stricken low and hopeless pain haunt us today. Their wild eyes burn across our sleep, they haunt us in the busy throng, with silent eloquence more deep than word or song. Give. We are pawns upon the board. We see not how fate's dice are thrown. The life swung by a trembling cord might be your own. Give. T'will be meted back to thee when death who waits, sorrow we roam, withdraws the veil that we may see the lights of home. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Paul Harvey. Ori Sacra Fames by George Essex Evans. Read for LibriVox.org by Adrian Stevens. Now that the gods are dead, where shall we find us a god? Myths of the Greek Olympus have sunk in the surge of time, and Jehovah, the god of wrath, who stayed the sun at his nod, and Jesus, the Nazarene, preaching a dream sublime. Worship and form may live, practice and faith have fled. Where shall we find us a god, now that the gods are dead? What of the old exists, but feels the touch of the new? Thousands of voices shout, where is the voice that leads? Through the wreathing mists of night will the grey of dawn be true, in the age of vague unrest, strivings and shattered creeds, where the children turn with scorn from the paths their fathers trod. Now that the gods are dead, where shall we find us a god? Gone are the mists of old in the light of the larger day. Gone is the foolish hope, the trust in a power above. Science has swept the heavens and brushed religion away. What need we hope or fear? Warfare is clothed like love. Priestcraft is but a trade. Souls can be bought and sold. Why should we seek for a god now that our god is gold? Great were the gods of Eld, a greater than all is near, noblest of all the powers which ruled o'er the soul of man. Centuries paved the way, now the ideal is here, product of all the eons that rolled since the world began. Millions have toiled for this with sufferings manifold. This is the triumph of time, the god of the world is gold. Worship before his feet and kneel in his holy place, for his altar is on the hearth, and the rolling world is his throne. With the throb of a votary's pulse beats the heart of the human race. From the lips of the child at play sounds the creed we have called our own. Gather, O sons of men, but not like the men of old. Savages worshipped honour. We have no god but gold. Gather, O sons of men, let us kneel at the sacred shrine. Beauty was won by deeds, now it is bought and sold. Justice was deemed of God, now it is scarce divine. Honour dearer than life, what is honour to gold? O daughters, sisters and wives, beauty was meant to sell. Let us call the blessing of heaven on the marriages made in hell. Over the marriage chime and over the requiem sigh, into the peace of home enters the roar of the mart, barter whilst day be day, ere night when no man may buy. Nothing too high or low in a world of culture and art, this is the crowning age, born of the centuries fled, age of sweetness and light, now that the gods are dead. Souls of the mighty dead who lived and died for the right, genius inspired of heaven to battle for human need. These are the days of the dawn, the dawn of diviner light, when the child at its mother's breast is lisping the modern creed. If haply thine eyes may gaze on the paths which thy feet have trod, behold, in a godless age we have sought 
and found us a god. Deep from a million throats rises the strain sublime. Justice is for the rich, patience is for the poor. Wealth is the only good, want is the only crime. Beauty is for the old, but if the price be sure. Deep in the whole world's heart festers the cursed creed. Yea, though the gods be dead, we have found us a god indeed. Better the clash of steel and the flag of battle unfurled, better the roar of guns and death for the future's sake, than the curse of gold should canker the heart of the world. Where is the voice of the leader? When will the people wake? Nay, let us fold our hands. Madman, what fool would blight the star of an age whose Christ is Moloch, the Ammonite? Nay, for the day draws near when all shall not worship gold, honour shall not be bought, wealth shall not make the man, all have not turned away from the truths which were loved of old, all have not toiled in vain since the toil of the world began, all have not laid their souls at the feet of the idle red, some have remembered God, now that the gods are dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Spirit of Poetry by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. All things are hers concealed or manifest found or unfound her spirit lives in each dumb till the master soul is secret guest and gave its silent speech all things are hers she is the crystal queen of all men's vision and the moving breath with through the grayness of the sordid scene gloweth and quickeneth she is the flower maid of the dreaming noon the goddess of the temple of the night where the berg turrets gleam beneath the moon she builds her throne of white she knows the battle hymn of mighty wars when wind and ocean thunder on the strand she knows the song the lonely river bars sing to the listening land armored and helmeted and spurred for fight she fires men's hearts to right the bitter wrong yet sits she weaving of a summer night flowers of a bridal song she gives the temper that has made men great and fashioned heroes out of common clay and wielded firm into a might state the tribes of yesterday use radiant vision and the dreamy dawn of the soft love light in a maiden's eyes and holiest joys of motherhood are drawn by her from paradise she knows the wheel song of the stars that run their glittering courses through the blue abyss ere the round earth fell flaming from the sun her spirit was and is she is the phoenix ever making true the dim tradition of the misty morn the crucible of science gives anew her fairy form reborn all things are hers but not with equal word dowers she the pilgrims of the sacred shrine only the great interpreters have heard her melodies divine all things are hers and so to her i bring songs of the dreams that haunt me on my way i who scarce hear the rustle of her wing borne on the wind away
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Brunton Stevens by George Essex Evans. Read for LibriVox.org by Adrian Stevens. The gentle art that ate it wrong, the courage that all ills withstood, the seeing eye, the mighty song that stirred us into nationhood, have passed. What garlands can be spread? The prince of courtesy is dead. The power that touched all the human chords with wit that lightened through the years, without a sting whose tender words unsealed the fountain of our tears. Ah, bow the art and bend the head. The prince of courtesy is dead. Great singer of the south, who set thy face to duty as a star, thou, in ushed skies of violet, thy throne of kingship gleamed afar, shall not the toil of common days add nobler lustre to thy bays? O mighty voice, whose words shall stand when all our songs have ceased to be, steadfast the watchwords of our land, the guide and torch of liberty, the master poet called afar, and thou at last have found thy star. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Victoria by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. In Memoriam White star of womanhood whose rays, through years of peace and years of stress, shed wide o'er all thy people's ways, the light of nobleness, a memory in their hearts impearled, to nerve thy sons where'er they roam, empress and queen o'er half a world, yet angel of the home. Now, when the shadow of death has crossed the belt of empire sea by sea, the wide world weeps that freedom lost, a friend like thee, who strove for righteousness, who wore a hero's soul in woman's breast. God fold thee, now thy work is o'er in robes of rest. Death came not to thy fearless eyes, a king of terrors, but a friend, whispering long years of sacrifice at last shall end. Sleep, for the stress of life is o'er, and on thy heart is laid release, lay down the crown of empire for the crown of peace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Crown of Empire by George Essex Evans. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. Free is the wind that lashes into foam, the fortress waves that gird the sea king's home, and free the war-torn flag that is our fame, that fear nor treason, nor the storm god's might, nor the leagued banners of the world can shame, when Britain arms for honour and the right, and free the hearts that on this golden day bear willing witness to the sea-king's sway, from world-wide realms washed by the world-wide sea, they turn, O throne of freedom, unto thee. Homeward they turn from many a lonely place, maker of nations, mother of the race, homeward to thee, where in this solemn hour of mightiest empire Thou hast called once more a royal son to wield imperial power, and wear the crown that Saxon Alfred wore. Scepter and orb that a great queen laid down, lustrous with wisdom foremost in renown, 
whilst o'er them shone all glittering gems above the star of duty and the pearl of love europe is here and asia and the west lifts mid the throng its dauntless eagle's crest lo they are gathered prince and peer and lord and great ambassadors of mighty states and utmost nations not with naked sword but to do britain honour in her gates the splendour of this large historic hour this dazzling pageant of imperial power surrounds a king whose proudest boast shall be the hearts that hail him emperor of the free o sire august within these abbey walls to thee the sacred dust of britain calls to rule the realm that shook the strength of spain and struck the accursed fetter from the slave that tore from europe's neck the despot's chain and for a pledge of freedom o'er the wave has set its flag for ever not alone the fairest face that ever graced a throne queen of our hearts is with thee as we sing an empire's love is theirs god save the king unbar your ocean-guarded gates make wide your streets imperial city of our pride hark with the voice of millions rolling deep the world salutes thee on this royal morn strong as thine island rock when surges sweep thy throne stands steadfast round it there is borne the silent vow that prince and peasant make ere they go down to death for freedom's sake and dying no sons of their sons will be as swift to guard the sceptre of the sea o pillars of an empire dwarfing rome from the four corners of the world you come the strong sea-lion calls around his throne his ancient heirs his war-worn younger sons bring health and vine from hills of southern stone and myrtle where the twinning rata runs wreathes from our empire garden where between the purple thistle and the shamrock green the snow-white lotus by the maple shows the yellow wattle by the english rose this is a southern song blown over sea from mighty states now linked in unity from that far island continent that lies gigantic on the waters throned apart robed with the splendour of australian skies first to draw sword when with a single heart from every frontier line of empire rose new britain's arm to meet britannia's foes whose voices thunder as the joy bells ring loud from ten thousand spires god save the king end of poem this recording is in the public domain to the irish dead by george essex evans read for LibriVox .org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c tis a green isle set in a silver water a fairy isle where the shamrock grows land of legend the dream queen's daughter out of the fairy's hand she rose they touched her harp with a tender sighing a spirit song from a world afar they touched her heart with a fire undying to fight and follow her battle star too long too long through the gray years growing feud and faction have swept between the thistle down and the red rose blowing and the threefold leaf of the shamrock green but the seal of blood ye shall break it never with rifles grounded and bare of head we drink to the dead who live forever a silent toast to the irish dead tis an irish cheer on the hillside ringing where checked and broken the vanguards reel 
but on and upward and forward swinging the glittering line of the irish steel like points of light mid the boulders lying gleam and redden their bayonets keen on through the hell of their dead and dying forward forward the shamrock green to ireland set in the silver water to the fighting blood that is proved and tried our sharpest sword and our fairest daughter who saved the empire and turned the tide and wisdom comes as the days grow older we are done with the faults of the past i ween standing together shoulder to shoulder the thistle the rose and the shamrock green end of poem this recording is in the public domain Ellen's River by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone It was on the 4th of August, as 500 of us lay, In the camp at Ellen's River came a shell from De La Ray. We were dreaming of home faces, of the old familiar places, And the gum trees and the sunny plains 5,000 miles away but the challenge woke and found us with four thousand rifles round us and death stood laughing at us at the breaking of the day hell belched upon our borders and the battle had begun our maxims jammed we faced them with one muzzle-loading gun east south and west and norward their shells came screaming forward as we threw the sconces round us in the first light of the sun the thin air shook with thunder as they raked us fore and under, and the cordon closed around us as they held us eight to one. We got the maxims going and the field gun into place. She stilled the growling of a crook upon our southern face. Round the crimson ring of battle swiftly ran the deadly rattle as our rifles searched their forelines with a desperate menace. Who would wish himself away fighting in our ranks that day? for the glory of australia and the honour of the race but our horse lines soon were shambles and our cattle lying dead when twelve guns rake two acres there is little room to tread all day long we heard the drumming of the mauser bullets humming and at night their guns day sighted rain fierce havoc overhead twelve long days and nights together through the cold and bitter weather we lay grim behind the sconces and return them lead for lead they called us to surrender and they let their cannon lag they offered us our freedom for the striking of the flag army stores were there in mounds worth a hundred thousand pounds and we lay battered round them behind trench and sconce and crag but we sent the answer in they could take what they could win we hadn't come five thousand miles to fly the coward's rag we saw the guns of carrington come on and fall away we saw the ranks of kitchener across the copier grey for the sun was shining then upon twenty thousand men and we laughed because we knew in spite of hellfire and delay on australia's page for ever we had written ellen river we had written it for ever and a day End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At the Base Hospital by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone The willows sweep the water, and the rushes lean adown, And I see the river shining far away, With a snowy cloud above it, floating softly like a crown, and the water-hen and wildfowl at their play. Are the magpies still at battle in the crooked apple-trees? Is the ripple flow still singing at the bar? By the long grass sandstone pocket where the cattle lie at ease, and the sun is on the river at Glenbar. They are bringing in the dying, they are bearing out the dead, and I watch the nurses moving to and fro, 
in the long low whitewashed wardroom i lie dreaming on my bed and it may be that i too shall have to go but we faced the mauser bullets when they whistled down the wind and we felt the fight we fought was worth a scar for we battled for the empire and the land we left behind and i battled for the honour of glenbar half dead upon the barren veldt i heard the stock whips crack twas the rattle of the maxim's deadly rain i was riding old campesi as we wheeled the leaders back and brought them down the ridges to the plain i saw the slip rails gleaming and i heard the river flow then brenda's face came shining like a star and we watched the water finches as they flattered to and fro and the lilies on the river at glenbar i've seen an army moving out a hundred thousand strong i've felt the thrill of battle and the smart but i'd barter all the glory for a day at dandenong and the cool hand of the bush upon my heart they say we drove their rifles back like chaff before the wind they say our name and fame have travelled far but my heart is full of hunger for the girl i left behind and the old folk by the river at glenbar end of poem this recording is in the public domain the wayfarers by george essex evans read for LibriVox.org by paul harvey still the white stars burn overhead the green earth swings upon her way where are the voices of the dead the hearts of yesterday drawn by what strange mysterious power from what dream world and magic sky came they to laugh on earth an hour to weep to toil to die and whither gone on what wild flight by planet pale and sceptred star what realms of sorrow or delight now wonder they afar pale wayfarers whose noiseless tread is near me as i seem to see the mighty generations dead and all that yet shall be are past and future then a breath that one vast present makes its own the angel birth the shadow death each guards a world unknown wayfarers all we know not whence we came nor whitherwards we go deep in our hearts a haunting sense that somewhere we shall know still the white stars burn overhead the green earth swings upon her way where are the voices of the dead the hearts of yesterday end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Recording by Paul Harvey. Kimru by George Essex Evans. Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone. Dim in the mist of ages, seeking a resting place, broke on the shores of Britain the wave of an Aryan race clear through the mist of ages ere ever the white christ came songs of the cymric singers have chanted the brython fame dark with the fate of nations and swift as a broad spear hurled the breath of the god of battles swept o'er the western world where are the old-time peoples men of the warlike front from the surge of the wild atlantic to the shores of the hellespont come and gone like the breezes ebbed and flowed like the tide race and feature and language are lost in that vortex wide rich is thy soil o cumru drenched with the hero's blood where midst the changeful aeons changeless thy people stood land of the birch and the buckthorn home of the hoary oak where songs of the thin march linger and the words that merlin spoke land of the tarn and torrent where broods by the rock-bound springs 
the spirit of stern Canada, the first of the brython kings land of the mellow marches deep valley and barren scar sweet with the dreams of cadoc and the lore of howl dar whereupon dark pim limon the snowy cloud wreaths rest where wild demetia's forelands spurn the billows from her breast comes of the heart that loves thee under the changeful skies rich with a rhythmic measure the surge of the centuries days when the cymric armies marching in thousands strong followed the fierce anirin chanting his battle song deeds of a desperate valour that turned through the wavering years the thrust of the roman pillar the rush of the saxon spears the charge of the norman barons met by the stern reply of a land that had taught the caesars whether her sons could die men of the blood of muric of melgin the leonine who smile at the saxon hierarchs who laugh at the norman line who are sprung from the loins of hunters who followed the mighty hue wherever the broad spear glittered wherever the battle grew kin of the warrior princes who sank in the bloody tide that raged on the field at hexham where brave cadwallon died forget not the land that bore you be true to the breath that fills the heart of her singing valleys the heights of her storm-crowned hills the soul of the nation stirreth yet as it did of old when the helm of the great pendragon flamed o'er his talk of gold the myths of the greek and roman dim in the eastward grew and o'er the realms of asia the banner of islam blew high in the halls of honour bright on the scroll of fame deep in the hearts of heroes is written great arthur's name a star on the heights of morning clear in the pearl of dawn it carried the white christ's message wherever a sword was drawn it flashed on the heathen darkness it nursed with its golden ray the strength of the early churches that grew under david's sway ill shall the oak have blossomed and warped shall its branches be when britain forgets to honour the dawn of her chivalry wherever grows britain's glory wherever her power is felt tis won by the fire that flushes the blood of the restless celt scottish or welsh or irish whatever the branches be the gale and the brython together are stems of the selfsame tree the song in battle in council by land or by stormy tide they move in the van of progress wherever her realms are wide the seed of the selfsame people still dwell by the cambrian shore the tramp of the roman legions is heard on the hills no more saxon and dane and norman the spirit you could not quell deem not it died in darkness when the last llewellyn fell hemmed and harried and fettered ever it rose anew twas first neath the cambrian tudors the greatness of england grew now torque and lance and tarion hang high in the castle hall the bay of the cymric warhound is mute neath the roman wall the voice of the seer is silent in dim vast forest aisles by grove and haunted streamlet no white procession files past are the days of prowess the fame of the strong white hand but the hearts of the cambrian peasants still cleave to the mother land still with the stern persistence that kept them a race apart they live for a nation's glory they toil for a nation's art true to a high ideal never to falter nor swerve the fire of a strong endeavour glows through their calm reserve still to the living present the power of the past can reach the spring of a nation's culture wells through their pensive speech burns and rises and surges through class and order and sect the thirst of a wider knowledge 
the passion of intellect from the fenlands of tremon dock to where severn waters fall the many are one with the purpose the purpose is one with all far from the cambrian mountains far from the tivy side or pen may mere uplifted above the foaming tide where the stars above calm guiant watch while the waters sleep or where conway darts its arrows by degenwis rocky steep far from that gloomy chasm where the weirs with thunder shake and the rocks of dart lynn edwell frown o'er the darker lake far from the mercian marches where the rivers keep their tryst where the corn is waving down the vale of sweet land wrist wherever their fate may lead them wherever their footsteps fare the soul of the cambrian people is free as their mountain air however our days may darken our dreams of that land shall be as the glint of a sunbeam shining at dawn on a wintry sea End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To a Bigot by George Essex Evans. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Here am I sent a wanderer like to thee, and here a moment ere the night i stand the twin eternities has been shall be gird me on either hand my joy or grief the flicker of a wing of some brief insect in the blinding glow one moment down the wind my voice shall ring this and no more i know my soul went out amid the ways of men, by land and sea, and to the stars o'erhead. I deemed it lost when it came back again. Is there a God? I said. Thou fool, it answered, all are truly kin. God is the soul of all, no power apart. God is the spark divine that glows within the temple of the heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Kara by George Essex Evans. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C checkered with sunshine and shade the umbrage of white clouds in motion rearing their summits to heaven broken like waves on their strands northward and southward and seaward the mountains arise from the ocean poised on a height above all kara the beautiful stands Kara, whose mountain the ranges lie under in turbulent surges, billows of purple and blue that stretch from her base to the sea. Kara that knoweth the breath of the storm wind, the sound of his dirges, sweeping her gorges and clefts, or sighing to river and tree high as an eagle's nest crowning a summit storm-beaten and hoary framed in a setting of green which somber tints deepen and tone gleam all the stations white roofs refracting the summer god's glory ribbons of silvery light surmounting gray masses of stone Beauty is round it, and peace, and silence and sunlight enfold it, clothing with mystical charm summit and forest and scar, 
Fair as a dream of delight it seemeth to eyes that beholdeth, Roofed by the azure of heaven, With sheen of blue waters afar, Dreamily drifteth the day in solitudes far from life's clamor, Soundeth no murmur of tongues, echo of hurrying feet, Soundeth no blast of the furnace, nor anvil that rings with the hammer, Thunder of horses and wheels, traffic and roar of the street, Only a silence supreme, where nature seems buried in slumbers, Save for the bellbird's clear note, or murmuring cadence of bees, or sought of the wind as it chanteth its peen in musical numbers, soft to the pine crest aloft, monarchs of leaf laden seas. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Out of the Silence by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Paul Harvey Here in the silence cometh unto me A song that is not mine With wash of waves along the cold shore line And sob of wind and rain upon the sea It is the song and message of the dead Around my soul tonight I feel the kinship of the infinite I hear the sound of voices that are fled. And as beneath the viewless angel's wing Bethesda's pool was stirred, My heart is troubled by the mystic word Of one who through my soul and lips would sing. There is no note of wailing in the strain, But resonant and deep. Out of the vastness doth the music sweep, Into the silence dieth it again. To breaking hearts it saith be comforted With secret pain and tears, And night-long penance through the torturing years Vex not the spirits of the mighty dead. Weep not thine error done, thy thought untold, Shall not their vision be, Subtler than ours, more delicate to see, All that the fullness of the heart can hold. Make not by grief an evil of their good, where the immortal look, life's hidden secrets are an open book. All thou hast felt is known and understood. Out of the silence throw my soul to thine from realms unknown. A breath of tenderness from far lips blown floats with the promise of a peace divine. And soaring through the shadows where we grope, a mighty cadence rings, a spirit moves with morning on its wings, the voice and vision of eternal hope. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Paul Harvey. Al Tiora Pito by George Essex Evans. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Oh, for a vision of the perfect light, To shame the splendor of the morning star. Oh, for a breath from out the infinite, Where the great heart of being throbs afar. Oh, for that sound too fine for mortal ears, The music of the silence of the spheres. The masters fathomed not that song sublime, Though oft on straining ear and brain or rot, And heart grown faint at heights too sheer to climb, The roll of some immortal wave of thought Swept by and left adown its troubled verge, The lingering echoes of its mighty surge. To each there came the passion and the fire, the breadth of vision and the sudden light, and for a moment on an earthly leer quivered a tremor of the infinite. Yet to each poet 
of that deep-browed throng, Twas but the shadow of immortal song, Twas but the presage of the omniscient soul that moves and throbs through all this wondrous plan unseen unheard unknown that is the whole yet stirs in atoms and the heart of man that throw all phase of change and form and name remains and works eternally the same that seems to whisper us all life is one reborn in death it blossoms from decay the same when first the fury of the sun belch forth his satellites of fiery spray the same when he and all his planet train shall plow the ether cold to glow again whither o oh, whither still the eternal cry that from the ages rolled and yet shall roll who shall declare to man his destiny a unit in the cosmos of the soul a spirit germ storm tossed in doubt and strife that feebly dreams of larger light and life systems and stars their courses onward sweep and creeds and nations flower and fade away still nature worketh out her purpose deep new life new thought for that of yesterday unto the utmost confines of her range one law abideth of unchanging change around us dwells the secret no man reads about us swells the music none can hear behind us lie the ruins of the creeds before us loom the mystery and the fear to love and hope our souls are clinging fast what giveth these perchance gives truth at last end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Average Man by George Essex Evans, read for LibriVox.org by Paul Harvey. His hat looks worn and his coat sleeves shine. As I see him step from his bus at nine, his boots are pieced and his tie homemade, and his trousers patched where the edge was frayed, and his face is lined by the stress of life where a man must fight for his bairns and wife. Who's that, I ask, as his face I scan, and the answer comes, no, oh, an average man. He has not got notes, he has not got gold, but his homely lunch and his handbag hold, and day by day, as the seasons go, he follows his duty to and fro, and shadows follow him everywhere, grim want and worry and dread are there, for life is not on a gorgeous plan, Far, far from it to the average man. The floods, the banks, and the curtailed screw, The weekly bills and the grasping Jew, The servant's wage and the doctor's fee, And the needful change by the breezy sea, And the pent-up hours at the desk, which mean A man's brain's change to a mere machine, And a wife's tired eyes and the children wane, All press like lead, on the average man. When the blood is up, tis a simple thing, to charge where the bombs and the bullets sing. But he is worthy a higher place, who fronts his woes with a smiling face. For the noblest strife in our life today is the humdrum fight in the humdrum way. Oh, wealth and genius may lead the van, but the hero is often an average man. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Recording by Paul Harvey. A Commonplace Song by George Essex Evans. Read for LibriVox.org 
by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Ebbs and flows the restless river in the city street, where the great nerve centers quiver, where the pulses beat, where the human waves are driving, drifts a woman's face, white and worn by ceaseless striving with the commonplace. Want has written strange inscriptions on the brow and cheek. Pain could weave some weird descriptions if the lips would speak. Toil has touched the lines of beauty and the curves of grace. Comeliness is good, but duty rules the commonplace. Thick old shoes and shabby bonnet, dingy cotton gloves, old turned dress with darns upon it not what woman loves gaunt umbrella green with weather one must self efface to keep home and bairns together in the commonplace late and early never shirking tub and scrub and broom late at night with needle working in the dwelling room Yet when weeks' receipts are thinner, grocers' bills to face. Ten pence means three children's dinner in the commonplace. Poets sing their wild iambics, love and war and gods. Let us sing of humble women fighting fearful odds. Not where steel and bullocks rattle and the squadrons race but the grim unending battle with the commonplace now they shriek the creeds are dying faith is of the air wayfully their leers are sighing sonnets of despair all the scheme of things evolving somehow out of space darken then instead of solving this grim commonplace Rogues may win success and glory, beauty, pride of fame. Statesmen make a nation's story, poet's deathless name. But the patient woman toiler, what is hers to win? On the one hand, want the spoiler, on the other, sin. Yet who swear and strut and bluster, so-called manly pride, when you answer at the muster on the other side will the courage you have vaunted stand you in such grace as weak hands that fought undaunted with the commonplace noblest worth works ever humbly oftest is unseen half the world is toiling dumbly in the gray routine Sing, O poet of the morrow, cheer the weary face, where brave women moil and sorrow in the commonplace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Wheels of the System by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Where is God, whilst all around us sounds the jarring of the wheels? When the cry of human anguish star words through his glory steals? There is neither hope nor pity underneath the moving wheels. Woe to him who slips or falters whilst the wheels are moving on. Woe to him who stays to breathe him when the goal is nearly won. There they lie and lie forever over whom the wheels have gone. O oh, my brothers, draw we nearer to the dream the poet sings. War, red war, and rapine ruleth underneath the shows of things underneath the mask of mercy there are wisps 
of many things. Here in silence, reft of slumber, with sad heart I dream and doubt. Star by star the night is waning, star by star the night goes out. But the bitter strife of all things ceases not within, without. Beat by beat the cold light groweth, beat by beat the morn comes in. With his crimson robes about him like a royal paladin, but the bitter strife of all things ceases not without, within. O'er the peaceful face of nature smiles serene the gracious sun, and men smile and hide their tactics when the battle has begun. Tear the clumsy mass asunder, and behold what things are done. For the wheels go on forever, crushing through the human hives and the goal the victor reaches rests upon a million lives and the motive shall not profit it is only power survives where weak women starve and sicken dying in the paths they trod where strong men are bent and broken underneath the system's rod. Will you smile and prate and tell me this is still the will of God? But I hear like distant thunder welling deep from out the sky, tortured with the grief of ages and exceeding bitter cry. There is none can stay them ever were he mightier than I. Deeper laws than love are hidden in the power that runs through this. All the fiery wheels of heaven through the seas of ether hiss. Star and sun and planet rolling onward through the black abyss. Wail no more, O fellow workers, for the aid he fails to lend. Stricken with a deathless sorrow for the ills he cannot mend. God the worker fights in silence for the good he cannot send. Not the Lord of love, creator of all grief and pain and crime, but a godlike soul ennobled, battling for a goal sublime. Through the bloodshed of the eons, forward to the happier time. Thine the world to mold and make it free for all from rim to rim. Thine to fight and toil and triumph over every problem grim. To create and cure and conquer, working onwards on with him. Face to face with iron systems face to face with endless odds, where the wheels of heaven forever race beneath his chariot rods. Soul of man, whate'er thy sorrow, is thy burden more than God's. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. By the Sea by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone Bright skies of summer o'er the deep And soft salt air along the land The blue wave, listing in its sleep, Sinks gently on the yellow sand, And grey-winged seagulls slowly sweep O'er scattered bush and white-limbed tree, Where the red cliffs like bastions stand, to front the salvos of the sea now lulled by its own melody yonder the rising waters ride or ironstone masses seldom worn there gnarled and bent by wind and tide a single mangrove stands forlorn alone in melancholy pride a symbol of the soul of man in life's wild surges tossed and torn 
that yearns amid the battle's van for the vast good it may not scan along this silent shining sand come brother of my heart with me though i have never felt thy hand and though thine eyes i ne'er may see yet somewhere or by sea or land thine heart and mine keep equal beats and in life's strange eternity responsive souls perchance may meet and know each other ere they greet beyond regret and carking care that to the murky world belong the chimes of earth and sea and air ring softened here to elfin song come friend of solitude to where the low dark jetty meets the blaze of sky and waters slumbering long here let us dream while ocean plays the mystic chants of golden days end of poem this recording is in the public domain the two goblets by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone Bearing two crystal goblets in her hands, To a philosopher an angel came. One wine shone clear as water or white sands, One red as flame. Choose, said the angel, from life's winepress flows, For all mankind the vintage which I bring. The pale cup holds exemption from life's woes, The red brings suffering. One wine is colourless, the dreamer said, Who suffers keenest, nobler joys attain, And to the dregs drain from the goblet red The draught of pain then spake the angel thou hast chosen well what seemeth loss to thee shall prove thy gain all that is pure and sweet and beautiful is born of pain end of poem this recording is in the public domain the doves of venus by george essex evans Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone The dull earth swung in silence o'er A dreamless world, a dreary star, Until the doves of Venus bore To Thessaly her ivory car. She whispered to the sea and air, And lightly with her wand she smote The solid earth, till everywhere The birds gave forth a sweeter note whereat the sun did brighter shine more richly did the roses blow and light deep peace a joy divine did fill the souls of men below and still are showered her magic arts on man and maiden hand in hand who hear a music in their hearts which none but they can understand a sweeter perfume sheds the rose a deeper azure tints the sky and softly with the daylight's close the doves of venus hover nigh thus off to earth doth she return to strip the scales from mortal eyes and send us love that we may learn how earth may yet be paradise end of poem this recording is in the public domain Ode to the Philistines by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Alan Mapstone In an age of mammon and greed, In an age of humbug and cant, Where speech is greater than deed, In the reign of the syncophant, Let us turn from the shameless lips That babble of things divine, And shout to the God we know, not the song of the philistine all hail as you gather and pass from the mansion and counting house men with a front of brass men with the soul of a mouse men with the mark of the beast scored as deep on your brows unclean as erst on the brows that quailed 
neath the scourge of the nazarene six days shalt thou swindle and lie on the seventh though it soundeth odd in the odour of sanctity thou shalt offer the lord thy god a threepenny bit a doze a start and an unctuous smile and a hurried prayer to prosper another six days of guile you have judged by the rich man's rule you have treated your thinkers as dust you have honoured the braggart and fool while genius has starved on a crust for all that you ask to fit what you call a man for a place is a shallow heart a noisy tongue thick hide and a brazen face you have sold your daughters for gold you have sold your honour for naught and your creed is easily told all things can be offered and bought and you thank the good lord god in your pews on your bended knees that you live in a cultured age and do cultural things like these in an age too enlightened and good to call any wrong by its name millions are crying for food millions are living in shame millions of human hearts as god knows if he sees and feels lie bound by the system's chains neath the crunch of the system's wheels you are slaves to custom and vogue you are timid to speak or to move you have worshipped the moneyed rogue you are ward in your narrow groove and the men with the noblest hearts who have aimed at the highest good you have trampled them under your feet unheard and misunderstood for the spirit of old remains that nailed the christ to the tree that brought galileo to chains and bruno to tragedy for the philistine altereth not unchanged since the world began he has hindered the march of progress and murdered the thinking man take heed of your sordid pride take heed of your purse-born ease for far o'er the world and wide grows something greater than these and the throb of the vexed world's heart no system shall cramp in thrall till the joy and sorrow of each be the joy and sorrow of all lo whoever shall stand and fight with the tongue or the brain or the pen for a larger measure of right for the mass of his fellow-men is nearer the unknown god than the chiefs of a priestly line his life is a deeper prayer than the cant of the philistine end of poem this recording is in the public domain a grave by the sea by george essex evans read for librivox dot org by alan mapstone no white cloud sails the lonely sky through the gaunt trees no breezes sigh through the lush grass no fall of feet no song of bird in all the land but floating faintly dreamily the distant dirge of waves that beat in discontent upon the sand here where all nature seems a swoon time languid as a summer stream drifts down the sweet soft afternoon and death discrowned of terror brings surcease to souls that wait not soon and casts above life's fervid dream cool shadows of immortal wings here by the old graves overgrown a bare mound without wreath or stone marks where he sleeps mid grasses long who sought not things that others seek who fought in silence and alone who in his weakness was so strong and in his strength so weak the shining years shall glide and go the human tide shall ebb and flow and love makes sweet the days to be and death makes smooth the brow of pain but no such heart again shall glow and no such friend shall come to me through all the cycles that remain some pass and perish with their breath he liveth yet and quickeneth as scent of roses on the wind recalls the bygone summer's day he leaves this side the seas of death 
the fragrance of a noble mind he dies but passes not away end of poem this recording is in the public domain the land of the dawning by george essex evans read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c dark rose her shore in seas of amethyst by tropic breezes kissed a summer land in watery wastes forlorn her ranges floating in the snow-white mist and gold of early morn the tides of empire ebbed and flowed afar the thrones of nations in the dust were hurled silent she slept beneath the morning star a virgin world love birth and death the stress of age and race change not her maiden face unstocked her pastures and untilled her soil she who for labor builds a throne space saw not her people toil down the low valleys up the stormy steeps careless they roamed at will the land was free from desert stark to where the mangrove sleeps upon the sea there dropped no anchor at her river bars beneath the quiet stars no wandering sail her silent waters swept by waste and scrub o'er plain and rocky scars no alien footstep crept in feathery billows of her grassy seas some lonely mountain stretched its capes of blue only the heavens above her and the breeze her secrets knew where the wild grass grew rank on slopes forlorn rise fields of yellow corn and purple lucerne bloom makes sweet the air the sullen mountain lost in mists of morn its golden heart lays bare spoils of her pastures crowd full many a mart her glittering treasure calls to many a land she has no secrets for the daring heart and strong brown hand the smoke and thunder of her cities rise to the same careless skies her arteries thread the same wide sunlit leaves her fleets stretch forth their wings of enterprise o'er the same summer seas she to the nations cry no past no fame no memories quicken round my flag unfurled the mightier therefore shall i carve my name upon the world end of poem this recording is in the public domain the splendor and the curse of song by george essex evans read for librivox dot org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c methought the unknown god we seek in vain grew weary of the evil he had wrought the piteous leantes of human pain till here and there some lonely souls he sought to bear the message of immortal thought and sent them forth to wander midst the throng crowned with the splendor and the curse of song but that which still was kindred to the stars fought with the flesh and moaned within its cell and beat its wings against its prison bars 
thus soaring off to heights sublime they fell dragged by the flesh into the gulfs of hell till all their days were as a tumult long between the splendor and the curse of song yet often mid the fever of distress some singer's lips would chant so sweet a strain that storm-tossed souls forgot their weariness and comfort crept about the bed of pain and men took heart and dreamt of heaven again and to the weak came hope and courage strong born of the beauty and the balm of song but life was bitter to the lips that sung and heavier on those souls that curse did grow who strove to speak to men an unknown tongue and mournfully their hearts did weigh and know the measure of the whole world's cruel woe and wearily they fared time's path along vexed by the splendor and the curse of song theirs was the homeless hunger of the heart immortal thought within a mortal breast listless they wandered through the crowded mart who to a careless world had given their best and when death lulled them with his wings to rest what wrecked they were they slumbered calm and strong crowned with the splendor of immortal song end of poem this recording is in the public domain Section 43 of The Secret Key and Other Verses. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Caveat. The Secret Key and Other Verses by George Essex Evans. Section 43. Failure. The boy went out from the ranger's grim, and the breath of the mountains went with him. With a song in his heart, and a smile on his face, and a light in his eyes for a foremost place, and the good green earth, and the salt sea spray, and the soft blue skies that were his that day. And, like Eden, ringed with a golden fire, afar rose the land of his heart's desire. The boy went down to the city's strife, and his face was lost in the surge of life, but a power that he did not understand had nerved his brain and his fighting hand, and he strove and failed, and he rose and won, and he failed again ere the fight was done, but he battled on where the days were dire, to win to the land of his heart's desire. And there, in the heart of the stress and din, mid want and labour and wealth and sin, the strong man struggled with shining eyes, and forced a passage and grasped the prize, and he cried to the power who had lent the fire, Lo, fame is the land of my heart's desire. Give the cup to me with a beaded brim, and the power that he knew not gave it him. But the air is keen on the cliffs of fame, and the shafts that fly have a deadly aim, with a foothold scarce and a sleepless dread for the gulfs below and the heights o'erhead. He cried to the power who had steeled his hand, I am outcast yet from my fairy land, for fame is a land where no strength may tire, but love is the land of my heart's desire. Then came to the man all his dream of love, with the brow of snow and the eyes of a dove, with the glint of the sun on her wavy hair, and her soul as pure as her face was fair. Like a living lily to him she came, till his eyes were wet and his soul was flame, and she called to him with an outstretched hand, and they entered into the promised land. But there came a day when he asked his soul, Is this the land and is this the goal? In his heart there lay what his lips denied, the pang of a hunger unsatisfied. For fame, he said, and for love I wrought, they are not the things that I should have sought. Tis to boundless power that my dreams aspire, and wealth is a land of my heart's desire. Then the power that he did not understand gave him ships and houses and gold and land, and the man's power grew with each passing year, 
but his thoughts were vexed with a sleepless fear, and his hair grew grey with the iron strain of dread of loss and the lust of gain, and he bowed his head on his hands and said, All things are mine, but my heart is dead. And he thought of the boy from the ranges grim, with the breath of the mountains over him, with a song in his heart and a smile on his face, and a light in his eyes for a foremost place, and the good green earth and the salt sea spray, and the soft blue skies that were his that day, when, like Eden, ringed with a golden fire, afar rose the land of his heart's desire. Then clear on his startled ear there fell a voice like the sound of a silver bell. To each is the work that he best can do, but you turned from the work when it called to you, and you sought instead for the vulgar praise, for the lips of love and for prosperous days. And with all that the world can give you here, you have lost the thing that you hold most dear. For who hears the word that the gods inspire, in his work finds the land of his heart's desire. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Dead Democrat by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. The roar and rush of life sweeps on, Still shines the sun as once it shone. Men reap and sow and live and toil, And plan for power and scheme for spoil. What reeks the world in field or street? One heart has ceased to beat. But she to whom in all the lands The toilers stretch beseeching hands, Democracy, the soul of all, Marks where her faithful servants fall. They seek not things that others seek, Who battle for the weak. Her yoke is heavy to be borne, her bitter paths are choked with thorn, but glorious shines through mist and haze the splendor of her coming days. Our loftiest tribute shall be then, he served his fellow men. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To Woomba by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Dark purple, chase with sudden gloom and glory, Like waves in wild unrest. Low wooded billows and steep summits hoary, Ridge, slope, and mountain crest. Cease at her feet, with faces turned to meet her, Enthroned, apart, serene, Above her vassal hills, whose voices greet her, The mountain queen. Fair city, unto whom, as to a lover, Our tender memories run, Childhood and springtide's careless hours are over, and summer days begun. Behold, and mid what wealth of vine and meadow, thy maiden feet are set, and on thy brow, undimmed of care or shadow, thy civic coronet. Fair have been dreams for thee by men who slumber, sound where no voice may reach, who Ere they joined the host that none may number, Saw what they strove to teach. The vision of a city wide and splendid, Crowning the range's wall, And o'er thy sweeping plateau far extended, Welcome for all. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. A Vision of Christ by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson 
There fell on me a dream when days were gray, and hope had left me there to grope alone amid the silence of an unknown way, vaulted with night and paved with barren stone, wherein such awful stillness held the air, poor comfort but to breathe one's own despair. Till in my terror called I him who bore the whole world's sin upon his sinless soul, saying, O oh, mighty heart, whose godhead wore e'en as a garment all our pain and dole, touch thou my soul with fire, and let there be some meed of godhead even unto me. Then from the purple dark I saw arise, silent, the pale form of the Nazarene, with deathless light of message in his eyes, and that vast human pity in his mien, purer than the purest depths of summer skies, not less unfathomed and not less serene. Brother, he answered, wilt thou call me as to a god and worship where I tread? Cold were the splendor of my victory, if dowered with godhead I for man had bled, who fell a warrior battling in the van, to prove to men what man can do for man. For through all ages untrodden ways, heart-sick and weary in the desperate fight, earth shall bring forth the harvest of her days, her strong deliverers leading to the light, and all who follow truth and who have trod her bitter pathways are the sons of God. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Plains by George Essick Evans, led for LibriVox.org by Wayne Cook. Wide are the plains, the plains that stretch to the west, an ocean of trackless waste, untrodden and rude, where an austral sun flings fire on earth's bare breast, brazen skies o'erhanging a treeless solitude. Wild are the plains, the plains that shimmer and surge, leagues of billowy grass like an angry sea, bend neath the storm wind, chanting its mystic dirge the wind that knows no lord, lord of ocean or lee. Calm are the plains, when the moon's clear beams are shed, and the wilds lie hushed, all shrouded in silver gray, and nature sinks to rest like one whose life has fled, in as a bride lying dead in her bridal array. Weird are the plains, the plains that wait for the dawn when the shadowy darkness strives with the sickly light, and the battle hangs in the balance, finely drawn, till the spears of morning pierce through the mail of night. Who shall hear, O nature, messages thou wouldst send in thy desolate places, far from the moving throng? Ah, but the soul that loveth thee best may comprehend the voice of the silence speaketh louder than song end of poem this recording is in the public domain the master by george essex evans read for LibriVox.org by charles boyles in sea and air in leaf and stone, where truth's magic's words are writ, where thousands throng, or wrapped and lone, life was his book, he pondered it. Through page of earth and sun and star, he heard the swift sweep of the song, of law and motion streaming far, which seemed to sing, the world is wrong. Men passed him by, they brushed aside, the dreamer in his dreams of law. They laughed and left him open-eyed, fixed on the point that no man saw. Life is to scheme, to love, to play, strike out for plunder in the fight. Our fathers did so, answered they, and they have said, the world is right. Men took the baubles at the call, men rose to wealth and power and state. But he, the mightiest of them all, remained because his heart was great 
The fool cried, life is but a jest. The schemer, earth is for the strong. The thoughtless, why think for the rest? But he cried, nay, the world is wrong. And friends declined, and fortune frowned, and hope grew dim with health's decay. The thorns of hardship hedged him round, but still he toiled from day to day. From clue to clue, from year to year, from law to law, from light to light, till came the triumph flashing clear, the world is wrong, and I am right. The laws of life, eternal true, swerve not by prayer for that or this. A power hath given the world to you, and ye have made it what it is. Why see worth perish, what accrue? Why see greed flourish day by day? A power hath given the world to ye, and ye can make it what ye may. No mourners wept beside his bier. Scant homage to his grave was brought. He left no wealth behind him here, only the splendor of his thought. And as the brown earth, heaping slow, shut the rude coffin from the sight, one who had known him long ago cried, After all, the world was right. But thought is king no clowns can bind, and genius in its crowning hour. So is deep the seed that, for mankind, springs, centuries hence, to splendid flower. When, by that lonely stone of white, with heads uncovered, men shall say, The world was wrong, and he was right. Who died for what we reap today? This recording is in the public domain. In Collins Street by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. I stood in the heart of the city street. I felt the throb of her pulses beat. The thunder of life on the sunny air. The waves of the people everywhere. Like the stirring lilt of a mighty song, ran the fever of life in the moving throng, with the hope and joy and the want and woe of a million souls in its ebb and flow. Like a floating straw in an eddy caught, my soul was whirled in the city's thought, the purse-born pride and the scheming brain. The grinding need and the grasping gain, The silent strength that is born to rule, And the shallow laugh of the feckless fool, The fresh young face where no shadow lies, And the quenchless pain in the harlot's eyes. I stood in the heart of the city street, And I heard not the tread of the passing feet, for the days were gray and the nights were long, And my soul was vexed with a wild, sad song. And the world like a stream flowed through my brain, And I saw her lands in a dream of pain, And her power enthroned on the people's needs, And her heroes dead for a hundred creeds. And I saw through the pageant moving on The same dark horrors of ages gone, The dumb despair and the dire distress, And man still mad in his littleness, Who cares though earth may be a masterpiece, If pain and sorrow shall never cease, Does God endure in his vaulted skies, the hopeless pain in his creature's eyes. Then I saw, like a glory shining through, what man had conquered and yet shall do. I saw the depths where he lay of old, and the heights of a splendor yet untold. And I knew in a flash, since the world began, what man had suffered and done for man, and I felt like a note that is borne along 
on the upward swell of a battle song. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. In a Garden by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Wayne Cook Girl with the soft gray eyes, you to the flowers belong. From the perfume of a rose my heart shall weave you a song. I will color its words with light, like the sun on that straying tress. The wind will lend me its harp to set it in loveliness. It shall fold you, soft as the mist, yet stir your heart like the sea, till lips that never were kissed shall yield their homage to me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Welcome by George Essex Evans. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Prince of the race whose empire is the sea, we welcome thee. Thy ensign floats above our harbor mouth, a fairy's hand. Has decked the great queen city of the south by arch and roof in bannered street and stand the vast crowd waits the cannon thunder greeting from the strand but in our hearts a deeper note vibrates the loving welcome of a loyal land tis the same race that from the iron north went faring forth flying the flag of england at the fore nor saw again the masted city with its ceaseless roar, the flower-flecked meadow and the leafy lane, the steepled hill, or ivied ruin rising from the plain. But for a sign that they remembered still, built greater Britons over all the main. For thee and her who comes with thee to grace, our land and race, five million hearts beat with a welcome leal, north, south, and west. Not in a day was built this commonwealth. Slow with our lives we built it, nor confessed how stern our fears through drought and flood, in fever and unrest, its tale, the courage of laborious years, and for a seal, the lifeblood of our best. Is she not fair, whose morning thrills the east, youngest, not least, of all those Britons that one isle has sown, one faith in Pearled. In world-wide union, we can hold our own. Gainst us in vain, all envious shafts are hurled. If still we be the sons of freedom, neath one flag unfurled, co-heirs of fame and wardens of the sea, one tongue, one race, one heart before the world. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. William Henry Groom by George Essex Evans. Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Vale. Now is there rest for heart and brain. No mandate calls to him again. The lips that voiced the people's will are powerless now and very still. The heart that loved the common cause, the brain that wrought 
a nation's laws these are no more there only creeps the shadow of a common grief we who have reaped what he has sown shall we not sorrow for our own though now in silence and relief the tribune of the people sleeps life hath its crowns in war and art in council hall and busy mart the noblest that a man may win is that his name shall linger in the people's heart for never shall oblivion slight the hearts that fight the people's fight much less when through a life of stress one voice gainst countless odds has stood and one in pain and bitterness the people's good he buildeth best who buildeth sure who year by year lay stone on stone broad-based and steadfast to endure whose guardian is his work alone there is no fame to rise above the crowning honor of a people's love so leave him to his rest who toiled for all nor gave his life to pile ill-gotten gains he passes to obey the master call his work remains end of poem this recording is in the public domain australia by george essex evans read for librivox.org by wayne cook earth's mightiest isle she stands alone the wide seas wash round her throne crowned by the red sun as his own this is the last of all the lands where freedom's fray torn banner stands not wrested yet from freemen's hands the world's gray page lies bare today the rise of nations the decay will she too rise and fall as they she called men to her and they came whose deaths have given the desert a name their fame is written with her fame we toil and strive we have our hour but she shall grow from power to power to wear the splendor of her dower the trust is ours to us alone we are the strong foundation stone the seed from which the flower is grown and whilst a realm in fee we hold to guard the new against the old nor take the glitter for the gold what shall it profit her if we make gold our god and strength our plea and call wild license liberty if in our scorn of creed and king all reverence to the winds we fling and fall before a baser thing though in her coming hour of pride her millions throng the desert wide her city stud the waterside what though her sword unconquered be her armored navy sweep the sea if still her people are not free to be the wave of thought indeed from new world vaunt and old world need to manlier day and mightier deed to be a people proved and strong true freemen of the poet's song for whom the world has waited long end of poem this recording is in the public domain john farrell by george essex evans read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the pen falls from his nerveless hand the light is fading from his eyes 
the brain that nobly served his land, darkens and dies. No, never dies. From hour to hour, the burning thought is living still. Onward it speeds with gathering power to strengthen and fulfill. Build him no mockery of stone, nor shame him with your idle praise. He liveth in his work alone through all our days. Sleep, heart of gold, t'was not in vain. You loved the struggling and the poor, and taught in sweet yet strenuous strain to battle and endure. The lust of wealth, the pride of place, were not a light to guide thy feet. But larger hopes and wider space for hearts to beat. O brother dead, thus one by one, our broken swords remain to tell. The fight is o'er, the work is done. Sleep, it is well. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. To the Unknown God by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Wayne Cook O oh, wilt thou, on the day when all is sifted, All heights of heaven, all depths of hell laid bare, When from the vexed world's heart thy veil is lifted, And men shall see the dayspring hidden there, O oh, wilt thou give to each whose course has drifted the thread, the clue by which his feet may fare, to tread at last with sight supremely gifted the path he missed in darkness and despair. This is the hidden secret of the strife, to find your life and live it. This is life. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Riches by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Andrew Gauntz Friend, you have wealth and power. Men come and go at your call. Yours are the whims of the hour. What have you done with it all? I am only a poet. Fighting a bitter fight, fate will not even grant me leisure in which to write. You said as your thin lips curled, money is better than bays. Battered and bruised by the world, I still have my golden days. You have lost the power to enjoy, you tire of each plaything new. Mine is the heart of a boy, friend, I am richer than you. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Thomas Joseph Burns by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. God gave him gifts, nor gave in vain, the great heart and the master brain. To dream, to battle, to attain, to storm the height. The power that all men strive to gain was his by right. O saddest spring in all the land, O mystery hard to understand, when at the stern unknown command, with icy breath, fate placed within his fearless hand, the gift of death. Calm be his sleep, who lived to dare. Go, say a patriot slumbers there, whose brows were never bent to wear his loftiest fame, yet wrote on Queensland's page a rare, a fadeless name. He fought his fight, he won his goal, 
his name is on the battle scroll and whilst beyond our weak control the tears we shed while deep within a nation's soul he is not dead end of poem this recording is in the public domain adrift by george essex evans read for librivox by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c a brisbane river reverie an amphitheatre of purple hills and emerald slopes where nestling villas gleam flooded with golden light that crowns and fills height vale and stream the clouds float motionless like isles of snow set in the sapphire of the summer sky the river like a ribbon far below winds rippling by as like a creeping snake with curve and sweep the languid current steals past mead and scar to the dark mangrove fringing on the deep abreast the bar slow drifts the boat past homestead town and lee the waters laugh and sob against the side as down the murmuring river to the sea dreaming i glide past meadowy marshland and gray limestone bluff low mangrove fens and waste lantana heights long reaches where the tides and winds are rough and sheltered bites now wider spread the waters to the eyes now sparser grow the homesteads scarcely seen save where some roof or gaunt gray trunk may rise against the green and salter on the cheek the breezes blow and in a deeper key the river sings and from the viewless sea move to and fro swift snow-like wings these are the harbingers from voyaged seas who knows what seas of thought man yet may sail as science slowly sifts life's mysteries and lifts the veil end of poem this recording is in the public domain seddon by george essex evans read for LibriVox.org by alan mapstone when from his place a forest monarch falls a thunder shakes the leafy leagues across reverberating to its utmost walls so through an empire rings this sound of loss still as of old the kingless forest isles we see but not the strength that was their fame so at death's voice far from his kingless isles the last great tribune answers to his name nature that builds great minds for mighty tasks sculptured his frame to match the soul within taught him how wisdom wields the power it asks for each new conquest set him more to win rough hewn was he for power a massive mould broad-brained far-sighted honourable free from narrowing envy with a heart of gold as wide and deep and dominant as the sea he passes but his memory is power behind him lives the good that none may stay his name remains a beacon light a tower by which all feebler hearts may guide their way come let us follow him with reverend feet with fern and ratta twine the wattle fair tread soft a mighty heart has ceased to beat and one of nature's kings is sleeping there end of poem 
This recording is in the public domain. Morning Land by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org By Linda Bray Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. Around and beneath the dull gray mist And the sullen roar of the sea, Scant footing place on the sheer cliff's face With death for a penalty. But afar and above there is rest and love, There is hope for brain and hand. The valleys fair and the crystal air And the peaks of morning land. Around and beneath are the mists of toil And the sullen roar of the world, And the sneer of scorn for a foothold gone And a climber backward hurled. But afar and above are the hopes of men With the heart and will to stand On the thin rift's edge and the slippery ledge That lead to morning land. They slip and fall from the sheer cliff's face. Ah, God! They are falling still. But another leaps for the vacant place And another his place will fill. Tis little they fear the coward's sneer or the scorn of a selfish band whose eyes are set on the parapet and the heights of morning land. Hark to the ring as their rock picks swing and bite for a foothold there. Grip by grip they are straining up that others may travel fair. The world will follow them all some day, the men it has shunned and banned, the gallant hearts that hewed the way that leads to morning land. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lorraine, Part 1 by George Essex Evans, read for LibriVox.org, by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. This is the story of one man's soul. The paths are stony and passion is blind, and feet must bleed ere the light we find. The cipher is writ on life's mighty scroll, and the key is in each man's mind. But who read aright, ye have one release. Ye have touched the joy in the heart of peace. Part 1 There's a bend of the river on Glenbar Run, Which the wild duck haunt at the set of sun, And the song of the waters is softened so, That scarcely its current is heard to flow. And the black fish hide by the shady bank, Neath the sunken logs where the reeds are rank, And the halcyon's mail is an azure gleam, O'er the shifting shoals of the silver bream, And the magpies chatter their idle whim, And the wagtails flitter along the brim, And the tawny martins with breasts of snow Keep fluttering restlessly to and fro, And the weeping willows have framed the scene With the trailing fall of their curtains green, And the grass grows lush on the level leas, Neath the low gnarled boughs of the apple trees, Where the drowsy cattle dream away The new tide hours of the summer day. There's a shady nook by the old tree where the track comes winding from Bendamere, so faint are the marks of the bridle track from the old slip rails on the ridges back that few can follow the lines i know but i ride with the shadows of long ago i am gaunt and gray i am old and worn 
by my heart goes back to a radiant morn when someone waited and watched for me in the friendly shade of that grand old tree the winter of memory brings again the summer rapture of passionate pain and she comes to me with the morning grace on her sun-gold hair and her lily face and her blue eyes soft with the dreamy light she stole from the stars of the southern night and her slender form like a springtide flower that sprang from the earth in a magic hour with the trembling smile and the tender tone and the welcome glance that were mine alone and we sit once more as we sat of old when the future lay in a haze of gold in the fairy days when the gods have lent to our lips the silence of heart's content ah those were the days of youth's perfect spring when each wandering wind had a song to sing when the touch of care and the shade of woe were but empty words we could never know as we rode neath the gum and the box trees high and our idle laughter went floating by as we rode o'er the leagues of the billowy plain where the grass grew green neath the summer rain and over the hills in the range's heart to the fern deck glen where the waters dart and we railed at time and the laggard year ere a bride would be mistress of ben emir now the old-time feud that was first begun when the gordon settled on glenbar run it had passed away it was buried deep in the quiet graves where our fathers sleep and sweet mary gordon was left alone in the quaint old station of rough-hewn stone the maiden whom lovers sought near and far the stately lily of old glenbar our kinsfolk had hated from year to year since the first lorraine came to ben de mere they have passed where none can cavil and strive how could she and i keep the feud alive i james lorraine who were better dead than harm one hair of her gentle head so we made the bond that would bind one day glenbar and bendemir for a for at last though it left me with saddened face i was master of all my father's place of the gray old dwelling rambling and wide with the homestead paddocks on either side and the deep verandas and porches tall where the vine climbs high on the trellised wall where the pine and cypress their dark crowns rear o'er the garden the glory of ben de mere from whence you can dream o'er the tranquil scene of the scattered sheep on the lucerne green and the mighty plain in the sunlit spread with the brown hawk motionless overhead and the stockmen's cottages clustering still on the gentle slope of the station hill and the wool shed gray on the swelling rise where the creek winds blue neath the bluer skies and here in the days when our hearts were light we lived life joyously day and night for the friend of my soul who was dear to me as no friend hath been or again can be was oliver douglas in cloud or shine my heart was his and his heart was mine and we lived like brothers from year to year and toiled for the honor of ben de mere and my life moved on through golden haze the splendid glamour of fortunate days what more to a man can the high god send than the fairest maid and the firmest friend i have read in some poet how friendship may 
stand strong as a tower in the darkest day when the lips of love that were quick to vow have failed neath the frown upon fortune's brow what a friend was he without fear or guile with his careless ways and his ready smile with the voice to cheer and the eye to praise and the heart to toil through the hardest days how he won all hearts were they high or low by the easy charm that i envied so for they say in jest i am true to race the dark lorraines of the haughty face awkward and shy and unbending when i am full of love for my fellow men but i caught at the sunshine he flung about the man to whom all my heart went out ah how oft at dusk neath the evening star have we reined our horses at old glenbar and sat in the quaint familiar room made sweet with the scent of the jasmine bloom where my soul first saw in her dreamy eyes the lights of the gateways of paradise how we lingered over our hopes and fears as we planned the course of the coming years whilst oliver chatted with easy flow to margaret bruce with the hair of snow the proud old dame of a proud old race who lived for the child with her sister's face oh the joyous days oh the morning air when the blood was young and the world was fair when from terra and westmere and boradale and from snowdon hills and from lily vale and from talleran and the plains of scar all sent down their horses to old glenbar from many a station from miles away came the happy faces on bracing day came the big bush buggies fast rolling in with the four in hands and the merry din and if strife was keen in those days of old twas for love of sport not for the lust of gold for then each man rode as a man should ride with his honor at stake and the station's pride when every race horse was sent to race and each run had a crack for the steeple chase and i see the last timber loom big and bare as we held the field with a length to spare and douglas crashed past me on charioteer the big gray gelding from ben de mere but i rode the bay with the tiny star that had carried the lily of old glenbar and i rode for all that i cared for most and i collared the gray ear he passed the post ah how gaily and lightly our pulses beat as the night went out to the trip of feet and though all men sought her with hope and praise it was i she loved with my awkward ways it was i she loved in the golden days the drought came down upon ben Demere, and the grass grew yellow and scant and sear and the lucerne paddocks were eaten brown and half the trees on the run cut down and we toiled all day midst the dying sheep the tottering frames that could scarcely creep and the dead by scores lay over the plain but god seemed deaf for he sent no rain and whilst hope stood sounding her funeral knells who had heart to talk about wedding bells and the drought held on for a three-year span and i woke one morning a ruined man yet fate smote harder a deadlier bow for on old grand bar there was word to go for the mortgage hung over glenbar run and their stock 
were dead and their credit done and the bank foreclosed we were cast aside from the homes where our fathers had lived and died so we said good-bye ah the bitter end at the trysting place on the river bend but the ground lay sullen and bare below and most of the river had ceased to flow and the springs of hope in our souls were dried and in silence we stood there side by side and laden fear held my brain and heart and we strove to go but we could not part O oh, sweet is the dawn of love's perfect spring when the white arms clasp and the soft lips cling but fierce is the passion that fires the blood when love stands balked in its summer flood in her dark ringed eyes shone the sad unrest that spoke in the heave of her troubled breast and her face was white as a chiseled stone and her lips pressed madly against my own and her heart beat wildly against my heart and we strove to go but we could not part but these were the words she said to me whatever the fate of the years may be hope and my heart will wait for thee end of lorraine part one this recording is in the public domain lorraine part two by george essex evans read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c twas a long last look and a mute farewell to the homes where our fathers had loved to dwell and our faces turned to the wild northwest and we rode away on a roving quest but our hearts were young and we cheered the way with the golden dreams of a coming day when fate should lead neath a happier star back to bend mirror and to old glenbar and a vision rose of one bearded and brown a wanderer hasting to melbourne town to the faithful eyes now with sorrow dim that had suffered and waited and watched for him for the new home lay midst the city's roar and the station's calm would be hers no more and from douglas's lips came the story strange of the wondrous wealth in a northern range the weeks grew months and the months were spent as we overlanded a continent a thousand miles over scrub and plain in the sun's fierce glare and the tropic rain but we laughed at hardships to undergo and we smoked in the ring of the campfire's glow and we pushed ahead till in tracks grown blind the last station fence had been left behind and the land of the mighty runs spread wide unfenced and virgin on every side where you move a ship that has lost the strand or the grassy ocean of one man's land where a score of beasts or a mile the less are of little count in the wilderness but men count their grass and cattle instead by the hundred miles and the thousand head i have seen the plains lying baked and bare when drought and famine hold revel there and the cattle sink where the rotting shoals of the fish float dead in the water holes i have seen the plains when the flood brings down the leagues of its waters sullen and brown when only the tops of the swaying trees mark the creek that wound through the level lees 
and all is a sea to the straining eyes, save some lonely hut on a distant rise. I have seen the plains in the mad delight of the racing flames in their crimson flight, when the whip o oh, the wind will not stay or spare, and woe to the rider who lingers there. But, oh, the plains, when their beauty burst, on our wandering eyes as we cross them first, when the sun shone bright and a soft wind blew, and the sky was clear with a fairy hue, and afar, like an isle in a sea of mist, rose a mountain cap as of amethyst, and the big horn cattle, knee-deep in grass, wheeled scattered legions to watch us pass, as we drifted onward from group to group, and swift as a bolt came the wild hawk's swoop. When the brown quail whirled neath our horse's feet, or the bronze wing broke from his ground retreat. Footnote. This is the partridge bronze wing and footnote. And the lazy bustard on laggard wing, out of easy gunshot, was loitering. And for miles around us at daylight's close, the little flock pigeons in coveys rose, and the squadrons flew with a gathering force till an army darkened the watercourse. Thus we crossed the plains to their utmost rim, to the timbered belts round the mountains grim. Chain upon chain to the north and west rose the swelling ridge and the purple crest, and the gorgeous hid from the light of God, where the foot of a white man had never trod. There's a tawny flat where the grass grows green, like a bay it lies, two dark hills between, and a stream comes down through a narrow cleft. Here the camp was fixed and the horses left. Twas the last sweet grass, and no man could ride, or the beetling fastness on either side. Thence into the heart of the hills we bore, rich with ironstone masses and copper ore, and once or twice in the gorges old we found a trace of the color of gold. In a deep ravine walled by rugged heights, through the toiling days and the restless nights, I felt neath the spell of that gloomy place that a change had come o'er my comrade's face. Felt rather than saw, as it seemed to me, that all was not quite as it used to be. The laughter and jest and the glance and tone were not of the man that I once had known. And it seemed to me that he shunned to hear of Mary and Glenbar and Ben Demir. And there rose a sense I could not define, like a widening stream twixt his soul and mine. Then the light of the past like a star shone out, and I turned in scorn from my evil doubt. But the passions that rule since the world began were working there in the heart of man, and a breast that had guarded its secret well was burning then with the fires of hell. Tis the old, old tale of a woman's face, more strong than the shadow of foul disgrace, the old mad lust for the mastery to pluck the flower that is not for thee, for the dreamy light of a woman's eyes, it can lead on to hell or to paradise. Ah, little I dreamt in the days now done that the eyes I loved were as dear to one whose heart had been eaten with jealous pride 
through the years of our brotherhood side by side for once it chanced as i moved alone that i stumbled and fell on the iron stone a stumble that might have been made in blood for a bullet hummed where my feet had stood and i turned and saw from my vantage place the look that was written across his face he had fired at a bird but too low by half and he turned it off with an awkward laugh for as yet no shadow of what might be the power neath the surface had come to me yet a shadow crossed and it left behind a doubt that rankled within my mind and for weeks we played at the duel hard of an open candor but secret guard and the seeds of discord were subtly sown when the fever seized me and struck me down and days there were when the blood coursed free to be followed by morrows of misery but the fever heightened and day by day i could feel the cords of my life give way and my strength went out like an ebbing sea yet daily he tended and cared for me it may be some touch of the days of old made his hand draw back made his heart cry hold but i saw in his eyes with an anguish dumb that he waited and hoped for the end to come then i lost the power to move hand and head and as last i lay in a trance as dead awake yet a dream for a day and night then i woke with a start and the moon shone bright but the tent and the tools and the guns were gone and all save the blanket i lay upon not a sound came down from the mountains lone where the shadows huge by the moon were thrown in the gloomy gorge not a soul was near and i called his name with a bitter fear but no answer came to my feeble cry and i knew he had left me alone to die end of lorraine part two this recording is in the public domain. Lorraine, Part 3 by George Essex Evans Read for LibriVox.org by Linda Marie Nielsen, Vancouver, B.C. They speak the truth and they judge me well Who called me the man who has been in hell though the sky be clear and the sun shine bright men have walked on earth through that awful night whose ears have heard and whose eyes have seen the infernal shades like the florentine when the veil is rent and we see unroll the heights and depths of the human soul and with whitened locks and with pallid cheek have known and felt what we may not speak my life had gone out like a bright light's breath had no help come into that fight with death but the hands of fate that are swift and strange brought a people down from the western range brought a wild black tribe down the gorgeous dark who had seen the prince of an unknown mark and quickly round me were clustering dark faces and spears in a bristling ring and i lay there still in a helpless shrift with a silent prayer that the end be swift but a man spoke forth with a threatening spear that i was the god of the mountains drear and accursed be he and his kin and wife who should lay a hand on a sacred life so they succored me and i lay as a king 
who has dusky daughters to fetch and bring boughs to shelter and water and food and berries to temper the burning blood and they made me a shade from the tropic sun till the fire of the fever its course had run and at last new life after weeks of pain came stealing gently through every vein and i moved with the tribe but i pondered long why douglas had worked me this bitter wrong for as yet no word of the truth was told and i held that the motive was lust of gold we moved for the plain and we passed between the walls of the flat where the camp had been no sign of a horse in that grassy bay and oliver douglas was far away across the plains where the red sun dips o oh, sin on his soul and a lie on his lips but oh the joy when i found and knelt by a full revolver and a cartridge belt marked with his name and a mark of the mind in whose guilty haste they were left behind to be sacred things till the morn should rise when men pay in full for their treacheries these gave me power and a stronger claim they called me the lord of the thunder and flame but they watched me close with a sleepless care three years in the mountains still found me there but i learnt by heart all the gorges old and i found the granite and found the gold wealth beyond dreams to a savage men as wild as the miles with whom he ran ah uh, god could ever my lot have been to have lived and loved in a different scene to have seen love shine like a splendid star in the eyes of the lily of old glenbar five years had passed and another year since we turned our horses from ben de mere and a bushman wrinkled and aged and brown had worked his passage to melbourne town let it matter not though what evil stress he had battled out of the wilderness for the joy that was thrilling him through and through with a secret music that no man knew the last sweet words that she said to me whatever the fate of the years may be hope and my heart will wait for thee why do you tremble and sob and stare old margaret bruce with the snowy hair and chatter of ghosts of the past to me i am here to claim what you hold in fee give me back my own i have done no wrong for the eyes i love i have suffered long now the toil is over the fierce unrest and the lily shall lie in the broad leaf's breast and the heart that was faithful and strong and true shall learn what the love of a man can do for the future calls both to her and me thither eden lies and i hold the key cease woman cease i am waiting here for a bride to be mistress of ben de mere let be the past and this formless dread i am james lorraine who was long since dead give me welcome now shall all things be vain to the dead man come to his own again have you naught of comfort for such as i the past is dead let its memories die i am changed and worn i am tired and old but i bring the secret of countless gold but a wish of hers but a word of thine and bendamir and glenbar are mine bid her come to me that her eyes may see 
bid her come to me, bid her come to me. Then Margaret faced me with words of lead. Peace, peace, Lorraine, the poor child is dead. Married and dead, you are parted far. Dear friend, from the lily of old Glenbar, the Bendemeer and the Glenbar lands, they have passed long since to the Douglas hands. She had waited long, she had waited true, she had knelt in her sorrow and wept for you. When he came at last with a grave, sad face, to tell the tale of your resting place, his were the hands, they were clasped in ours, that had soothed and tended your dying hours, that had dug the grave and had piled the stone in the dim blue range where you slept alone, and he spoke your word in his own sad pain, not to mourn for you, we should meet again, but whatever the fate of the years may send, the friend of your soul, let him be your friend. But the starlight died in her eyes that day, and with roses white on her cheeks she lay, and the summer faded and came again, or the shadow rose from its bed of pain. But he came and went with an anxious air, one consecrated to watch and care. And from over sea came the call of race to title and wealth and an ancient place. And when Bendemir and Glenbar were sold, they were for the sake of the days of old. And he pressed his claim till she came to see that their lives could be lived to your memory. She was wedded here, she lies buried far, the ocean divides her from old Glenbar. Married and dead, it is all a dream to melt away on the morning beam, some passing horror of night whose power still haunts the brain in its waking hour. Can those trembling lips and those stony eyes and this heart grow numb in its agonies? Be a man indeed, do I see and hear, or roam a shade through some realm of fear? And of him, I cried, shall no vengeance find, those soft-lying lips and this double mind. There are human makes who have lived too long, but she said, Lorraine, let God judge the wrong. For the man you seek, he is over sea, with ten thousand miles twixt his face and thee. In the fevered night, when the gas lamps flare, and the human river sweeps here and there, by terrace and church, and long lines of street, and by dim lit parks where the shadows meet. I am drifting down with the human flood. The poison of madness is in my blood, and their hearts as bitter and dead as mine, where the faces throng in the moving line, numb with the chill of a black despair that no man guesses or wants to share. Unto each man once shall the gauge be thrown. He must fight the fight with his soul alone. When all ways are barred and he stands at bay, face to face with truth in the naked day, I have fought the fight with my soul alone. I have won my laurel, a heart of stone. Oh, never again when the white stars shine shall the eyes I love look their love in mine. And never again, when the soft winds blow, shall we ride by the river or whisper low, by the shady nook neath the old tree where the track comes winding from Bendemeer, and no bridal bells for our joy shall ring when nature wakes to the voice of spring, and no tiny hands with a touch divine shall link forever her soul and mine. She is dead, my lily, 
my shy bush flower the summer has fled where she bloomed an hour do her sweet eyes shine from some lonely star or the bend of the river on old glenbar mine is selfish grief mine is selfish pain but her sorrow is seared on my heart and brain what she heard i hear what she saw i see what she felt is bare as a page to me shall such evil thrive shall she drop and die and the man who loved her stand idly by let god right the wrong will he give the dead the sunshine and grace of the summers fled he has solace here for the silent tears of the hopeless days of the wasted years let god right the wrong he is deaf and blind to the griefs and passions that shake mankind who has eyes to see let him use his sight wrong is not righted but might is right then be my right and my hate the rod and my hand in anger the hand of god and the power is gold which no power can bend i have learnt the means i can see the end to my mountains then there to toil and wait i have lived for love i can live for hate till the power be mine till the way be sure i can face the future and still endure with a wild fire flaming through all my blood i have called to evil be thou my good love has patient been love was strong and true but the heart of hate can be patient too can be strong to suffer and calm to wait be swift to strike in the hour of fate to strike at the heart that has wrought her dole to strike at the man who has killed my soul end of lorraine part three this recording is in the public domain lorraine part four by george essex evans read for LibriVox.org by linda marie nielsen vancouver b c the mountains swarm like a human hive the picks are swinging in many a drive the axe is ringing on many a tree and the blast of a charge thunders sullenly and the growing heaps of the dull gray stone and the tents of men stud the hillside lone and the moan of the windlass comes again with an eerie sound like a soul in pain and across the plains lying baked and brown where the long teams creep till the sun goes down comes the curse and the whip like a pistol crack as the bullocks strain on the burning track soon the battery's thunder will rend the sky from the gorge where he left me alone to die they have felt the stir in the city south and in the comrade field is in every mouth and northward rushes the wave of greed for the whole world knows of the devil's lead four jeweled walls there are millions there but one man's hand is on every share one who knows the mountains from crest to glen a hater of women and feared of men who has heart for nothing save gold and gain a power to be reckoned with james lorraine as a miser handles and counts his gold so i hoard my hate with a joy untold let the weakling sink neath their dumb despair shall i spare the coward who did not spare oh the joy of hate oh the liquid fire 
when the strong soul throbs to one fierce desire so i thirst for life as a hound for blood and woe to the hunters who cross my mood to strike hard and home than to watch him die and to soothe his death with my memory this were joy indeed worth a few years breath this were joy indeed though the price were death then what holds my heart and what stays my hand who can cross at will to the motherland tis a voice that floats through my dreams at night and a white hand ringed with a fairy light from the world unseen that has drawn anear a tremulous whisper at bendemere i had planned the end in the mountain grim where the dream of wealth would be lure to him bound fast to a tree in some gloomy glen where no cry can reach to the ears of men and shot with a bullet he meant for me i have dug it out of the hardwood tree then to lose his cords and to let him lie with his false face turned to the smiling sky with his dying grip in a death of shame on the pistol butt that still bears his name a fool i have been from my mother's breast a fool who acted and thought for the best made way for others and stood aside and saw knaves feasted and defied with an open heart i have striven to do to men as ye would they would do to you and what have i gained by the christian rule a smile and a sneer at the trusting fool and the generous wish to be fair and just has been deemed but weakness and self-distrust now these things are over my soul is free i will deal with men as they deal with me for i care not whither my purpose tend let hell find the means so i gain the end and no guile too subtle or dark shall prove i have done with scruple and done with love the thud of the stampers all night and day is loud in the gorge where the campfire lay from the big hotel where the lights shine long comes the broken snatch of a drinking song for the roofs go up as the shafts go down in a fever and rush of a mining town i sit in my office with busy pen the saddest and richest of mining men i have sat like a spider and spun and spun till i hold the mortgage on many a run i have land and houses and shares and gold my stock increase by the thousand fold i am feared and courted with flattering breath and all that i live for is one man's death i have worked his ruin i hold his fate i have woven a web round the man i hate i have crossed his schemes i have won the fight for tools can be willing when gold is bright and the deeds of mortgage are in their hands over brendamere and the glenbar lands as i sleep at last on my bed of care comes a white hand floating upon the air and a woman's whisper is in my ear the man you hate is at bendamere and the last crimson streak in the west was dead and the white stars broke through the blue o'erhead and the horned moon like a sceptre pale cast its thin blue ray on the old slip rail as i cross glenbar by the big tree where the track goes winding to bendamere 
All the plain lay silent and silver gray, like a shroud for a bride on her bridal day. I could feel the menace and the hand of fate as I stood once more at the garden gate. With a passionate heart, for a while I stood, for the past came back like a rushing flood. Then I moved the latch and I crept within, a thief in the silence who fears his sin, like funeral plumes for some giant king. Rise the dark pine crowns and their shadows cling, purple and solemn to path and lawn, like the shadow of murder that waits the dawn. And the more porks call from the timbered knoll, seems the hoot of fiends for a dead man's soul. I am creeping slow down the well-known way. All round me is ruin and slow decay. By the weed-choked beds and the paths overgrown, and rank grass seeding on lawns unmown, and a low fence matted with running vine, in the home of my father's that once was mine, the old rambling pile and verandas wide, like an isle half lost in some dim gray tide, seems to welcome me, seems to feel and know that a ghost is here from the long ago, and my fingers close while my blood is flame round the pistol butt that still bears his name. Creep, creep to the west where the ground is bare, for a dim light shines from a window there. I have toiled for this through the gloomy past. I have prayed for this. Tis my hour at last. Here, God of the just, whilst I own thy might, who has given this man to my hands this night? Here I kneel and pray, be my hand the rod, be my hand in anger the hand of God. Where the fold of the curtain falls half drawn, by the windows wide to the western lawn, from the shadows vague of the outer gloom, I have slipped a shadow within the room in the shaded light on the low white bed i can see his face he is lying dead the hand of time has not marred its grace though the lines are deep on the well-known face and the brow is placid and white and chill with the peace that comes when the heart is still and the lamplight falls on the golden hair of a weeping child who is kneeling there. O oh, human vengeance and human hate, see thy altars scattered and desolate, poor paltry things of a passing breath, ye are silent here in the halls of death. Be a soul at rest, though his sin was deep, Yet bitter the harvest he lived to reap. He suffered long, he has worn the chain Of a life's remorse in his heart and brain. He has known the terror of hidden sin When the soul stands bare to the judge within. Be his heart at rest in the peace divine. Be thy mercy, Lord, on his soul and mine. For the child looks up with her mother's face, with the sun-god hair and the lily's grace, from the lashes wet with their pearly dew, shine the dark blue depths of the eyes I knew, the sweet eyes soft with a dreamy light, and the mystic spell of the southern night. They have left me this, tis the bond of fate, the woman I love and the man I hate. Through the window wide blows the gentle breeze, and the wind harp sighs in the shadowy trees, and I see the rise of a splendid star 
or the bend of the river on old glen bar end of lorraine part four this recording is in the public domain recording by linda Marie nielsen vancouver b c end of the secret key and other verses by george essex evans